Hello, everyone. Golf clap. Welcome <laughs> to, back to the podcast, the Pop Cultured Podcast. Oh my God! I ah, almost, sang almost it. made it real. He, you <laughs> almost made it real. You, you almost sang it. Never. That will never be a thing. You almost did it. It'll be a thing one day. Hard pass. <laughs> anyway, hi everyone. Welcome back with me and everyone. And look, we have a special guest. Super Antlers, who's here on the podcast. In oh, place, me. <laughs> in place of Pop Cultured Kitten, who couldn't make it because Pop I'm Cultured late. Kitten was Three having furball days. troubles. Heartworms? Prior I don't know. Day. What's a plausible reason for a kitten not to show up to a podcast? An acting gig. Yeah, it got run over by a truck. No! Uh. <laughs> Pop Culture Kitten. No! Pop Culture Kitten was in the inaugural no! audience. I mean, it would be a good reason. That's yeah. never a good reason. It's to a very good reason. You, you expect that cat to be on the podcast after he gets hit by a truck? Exactly. It's That is not canon. <laughs> Uh, Just to inform the viewers or listeners, uh, Pop C Culture Kitten is still alive and hasn't been run over by a truck. Yes, Good. Pop Allegedly. Culture Kitten is Allegedly. actually in He's a just in a dive premiere... bar drinking. No, let me finish. <laughs> He's in a premiere of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats using cats. only actual cats. And that's what Pop mm. Culture Kitten's up to. And Bravo. Be here. Bravo. That sounds right. But we have Super Antlers. Right. Yay! Or Darth Antlers, Yay! as the case may be. Oh shoot, where is it? Hang and of on. course, as always, I am joined by Joe. Joe Labon. Still, Still holding. holding. For General Still Hux. holding. And Still holding for General Hux. our Porg master, oh. SFP and Noah. <laughs> he, he, he just got those Porgs. He just found them. I, oh, I want so many of them. Of the Porgs. Yeah, but can you do a Porg scream? What is a Porg scream? No, no, really. no, no, not really. Almost. No, Almost. that's really. just like a it's high just high pitched <laughs> chewy scream. Yeah, pretty that's much. Probably is. Yeah. Probably how they did it. Yeah, I can't do the Porg scream, but I can do a trill because it's basically like pigeon. Good. Good. Only instead of going, you go. I also have fixed the microphone, so hopefully we're not blasting out everyone's ears who's trying to listen yeah, to this. Yeah, the, the, the pork scream probably deafened some people. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Good job. Sorry. Live sorry. Without, sorry. They'll live without their hearing. Anyway. I'm putting a rock in this in one. This one. <laughs> Played I was a lot of Maze Snowball, snowball Offensive, offensive earlier. Pat, pat, pat. True story. You and me yesterday, we were rocking it. We were rocking literally it. between that and <laughs> May Yeti literally. Hunter. Have There's, you played any I of those yet? In this one. And... I I have no idea what you're talking about, so I'm just gonna smile and nod. Overwatch. Do you have Overwatch? I thought you had Overwatch now. Oh no, I do have Overwatch. I've only played it like three times, and then my computer decided to kill itself. So. Uh, <gasps> no. Rest in peace, computer. Yeah. Well, I managed computer. to get it fixed, but like, I haven't been stored Overwatch since. Fair enough. Then is Overwatch people. the problem? Uh, no, uh, PUBG was the problem. PUBG, uh, mm. of course, as it as it always is. The new, it always the is, uh, yeah. the final release. Hey, I guess that means it's not crazy that it's game of the year because it actually did get released in twenty seventeen well, against game all of, odds. But it, but it wasn't game of the year. Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but it was nominated for yes, it, it was. which was r ridiculous because why would you nominate yeah. a game that wasn't actually out? Even really out. I mean, here's the thing. I'm mad about it, but I understand. It was like the most popular game. Uh, yeah, to be on fair. PC, like, period. How many hours do you think you spent playing it, Janky? Uh, Jack, PUBG? Jack, check your Steam. Check it. Check it. I want yeah. numbers. I want numbers. We're getting numbers. Let me see. What are Library. my numbers? They're going to be lower. I have played for 41 hours. I'm a new. Um, so I've played for 49 to... hours. I've played for 51 hours. Oh, really? Yes. 51 hours is quite a lot. How many? Can you see mine? Uh, let me get back to Steam. Steam I... doesn't want to open. Sorry. I see that you have it. I don't know how much you've played. Ah. Probably a lot. Oh, wait. yeah. I wouldn't show you. Why did I think that? Sorry. 
Um, at least probably seven. Probably a lot. At least seven. seven. At least seven. seven. Oh, 42 hours on record. It shows on oh, your really? Steam page. Hmm. Not a great amount of time. I win. I have the most hours in PUBG. Good job. It probably job. still you counts some of the, the ones time. whenever I did the beta. <laughs> it probably counts. Yeah, you wasted the most time on a game that hasn't even come out yet. I wasted the most time with lag. That's why mine's a 42. I've actually only played three hours of the game. The rest was all... <laughs> just looted like screenshots. Time. Yeah, just pretty like, much. Just like, oh, network lag. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait until this comes back, and then it comes back. Pfft, you're dead. Oh, Say the line, okay. PUBG. Say the line. Good. Network lag. Yay! <laughs> Simpsons references. Anyway. Welcome uh, to the chat. And why was it why wasn't it game of the year, guys? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why it wasn't game of the year. Why wasn't it game of the year, guys? Why wasn't No Man's Sky game of the year, you know? These are the questions we ask. But yeah. you know what? We'll get there. We have our <laughs> own awards to give out. We do. Mm. We do have those. Joe, I'm gonna try to fix you because What's you wrong are with you? too far to the. You. Fix you. You are down and to the left. Down and to the so, left. So you go up. Yes. Into the right. No, right. No, no. Sorry, my left, not your. You just go. Oh, 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 and, oh Yeah, okay. just there. There you go. Now you're. Now you're centered. Yeah. These are the five minutes of the podcast that everyone is here for, and they are the <laughs> yeah. most ridiculous five minutes of the podcast. Because yeah, it's nothing totally. but us just BSing until someone actually brings up the topic. Joe, you brought up that we should do a game hey, awards. Let's do our own game awards. Let's do Wait, that. Let's that do sounds it. like fun. Let's call them the Pop Culties. The, the Pop Culties. There has to yep. be a snappier name than that. The Poppies? I see that's from uh that's from uh Andy Samberg's Superstar. Uh that was mm. used. Fine. The... For lack of a better name, we will go with the pop culties for now. And when Change people it, tune in and think that we're trying to recruit them into a cult, I'll be like, no. We are. Full Drink. Putting it out the there. Pop the Kool Aid. Drink the Kool Aid. Drink the Kool Aid. Do it. Okay, I'm good. I needed to get a bow tie for the awards. Do it. Who did was? you, though? Did you Damn. need to get a bow tie, or did you just want to look snappy? Now, now I feel underdressed. No one yeah, told me same. I never feel underdressed. Because you're always any... fully dressed, or you're never fully dressed without a smile. I got smile. nothing. Do, do, I got nothing. Do, 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 do. I don't remember the rest of that song, actually. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Ah, oh. mustachio. Look at me. I didn't even shave. I look like a bum. Why you do look here? like a bum, but that's okay. I love you my fancy mustache. I look we like... I love you anyways, you gross bum. Joe, what did you call me once? An actor between jobs. You, you are like a B-list actor who's between jobs at the moment. Yes, that's how. That's like how you dress every day. It is. It's a pretty accurate summary, to be fair. It, it, it is. It it's is. True. It's true. That's why I said when we got fa that one time. I'll take it. I'll roll. With that was it. good fa. It was good. Fun. It was good fun. And then you came over to record Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> then we recorded Kingdom with Hearts with the fa because I still had fa left fu? over. We still had the fa. And then you left it in my fridge. So, yeah, I did. He I got did it the, he got the go next day when we recorded again. Let's <laughs> the appreciate next day when we came back Super <laughs> Antler's anyway. mustache and how villainous it looks. Yes. Bravo, <laughs> sir. Bravo. You Thank look you. like you're about you to tie need... someone to railroad tracks. Yes. I, uh, that's classy, I suppose. <laughs> it is classy because the the old the old school villains were the classiest. They always had top hats and opera capes, and they would tie people oh, to and, and, have a cape and like right black now. gloves or white gloves. Always gloves, though. Yes, always with always. the gloves. Always. It was always beautiful. All right, let's give out some awards. Yes, Who let's give out some awards. The first category. I, I have an award. All okay. Right. What well, is the, the award, award? The award for the most Just Dance game. For for the what? The for most the, the just most dance Just game. Dance game. There are two is nominees that... that I have. It's <laughs> Just Dance 2017 for the Switch and right. Just Dance 2018. Um, I would like to throw in a dark horse into this, which is One Two Switch. Which does have a get dancing mm. component mm. in it. It mm. does. And I think I that that's pretty just dance. In. I could pencil it in. 
I am looking at this big list of all the games that released this year. Yes. And I would like to throw into the ring Cuphead. Ah, uh, yes. It, it, it deserves any... a lot of, there is a lot of tapping on that. They yeah. do bob to the music. It's true. That does happen. Um, Super Mario Odyssey. He dances all the time. That's true. He's, he's dancing all over the place in that game. Jump up superstar. That might win this one. Yeah, I feel well, that's yeah, true. I agree. They do dance around quite a bit. It's true. Uh, Sims 4, maybe. I don't know. They probably uh, dance. I think that one's phoning in it. That didn't come out last year. Do they dance in uh, Persona 5? It came out on PS4 and PC November 17th. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Mm. Guys, I have the winner. Yes. Mm. Papa Rappa the Rapper on PS4. Yes, Papa the Rapper rapper remake. That's got to win. Papa Rappa the Rapper. I think we're all in agreement. That's the winner. I think we're all in agreement. Uh, Just Dance Award. The Just Dance Award goes to Papa Rappa the Rapper. Goes to Papa Rappa the Rapper. I just want you to know, we've lost two people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Bravo! In it's in the mail. To decide. The I'm gonna. Uh, All right. I'm gonna blame the person who brought the. I've got one. Let me pull out my tiny little notebook. Yes. Um. What is the best vocal track from a game this year? Um. Like Janky said, it has to be Superstar from Mario Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's a good contender. It's but... definitely a good contender. I don't know if Persona but... 5 has any. Uh, does Persona 5 have any, have any like music uh, with lyrics? Vocal tracks? I don't think. I don't it know does. if it has a vocal track. It has like the most bomb soundtrack of the year. But can can we include re-releases of games? Yeah. yeah. If it came out Swim... this year, sure, absolutely. Swim this way from Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Remix Edition for PS4. <laughs> Oh my god, you just had Swim that. This you way? had that yes. so prepped Swim and ready. This is the worst song! <laughs> Swim this way, well, Dad said we'll play. If, now, we're, if we're including remakes of games, I'd like to add <laughs> Papa the Rapper, the Chop Chop Onion song. Yeah, I was gonna say, if we're really oh, okay, gonna yeah. give it to someone, we gotta give it to Papa Rapper the Rapper. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I'm gonna stick to my guts, I'm gonna nominate Fist Bump from Sonic Forces. No, no. If you're going to nominate a Sonic song, song bad game. you need to do the death metal song from Shadow the Hedgehog. Doesn't even it matter. Didn't come out this year. It doesn't matter. It didn't even come out this year. If you're doing best vocal track, you gotta do like the the bad ending no. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog death metal <laughs> song. It's just the worst thing you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. That's what it actually is. It's true. That is true. a real audio <laughs> clip of that song. <laughs> No, that was that was me. That was not an audio clip. Can we include video game, um, not video game songs, but characters from video game singing? We can include sure. literally anything. Sure. This if is all nonsense. That, sure. Take yeah. on me, but sung by Crash Bandicoot going well. Wait, was that in the game? No. It should have been, but no. <laughs> but I mean... You know what? We'll I nominate that. that. We'll sa- we'll, no, we'll <laughs> save that. I have another category that'll fit in better. Okay. Okay. Who was the so, winner? I, I, well, I mean, I'm, we gotta decide. The, the, win, the decide. winner in this is no one. No one wins in this. <laughs> and They're it's, all it's, great. It's an equal tie. Everyone gets the award except for Swim This Way. Yeah, I think we can at least all agree on that. Yay. 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 <laughs> all right, here's my nomination. Yeah. Best Dark Souls of game. You, just, you stole that from Co-Optional Podcast. Yes, I did, but, but there's so one. many. There's so, so many for, Dark Souls of games out it's there. It's for a hard yeah. game. Just what is the hard game? Yeah, Crash uh, Bandicoot. This year? Crash, Crash Bandicoot. Bandicoot. It's Best totally Dark Souls, Souls, Souls guys. Platformers. But it's the it's Dark, Dark Souls, Souls of what? It'd what be the Dark, Dark Souls of platformers. Of? Yeah, the Dark Souls of mm-hmm. platformers. It's totally Dark Souls, guys. Cuphead's the Dark Souls of boss fights. I would like to throw in Papa the Rapper the remake. <laughs> Are we just the gonna end up giving all the rhythm to Papa the Rapper? I, it has all the tropes in of a of an amazing game. To be it, fair, have you the ever tried to? Com- it's the Dark Souls of dancing games yes, or it's rhythm the, games. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the Dark Souls fair. of rhythm game. But here's 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 an actual here's an actual one. Uh, getting over it with Bennett Foddy, the Dark Souls of everything. 
<laughs> dark souls of life the dark souls of life the one where you're just yeah. a person in a pot with a pickaxe and you have to climb a mountain and there's no save points and you could always fall up right back down to the bottom of the mountain yes i i would like to put forth sonic forces which is the dark souls of really wanting to like a game <laughs> but it's just not good for wait what'd you say Sonic Forces for the Dark Souls of really wanting to like a game, but it's just not good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, but I think we're all in agreement. The winner is Skyrim. Crash Bandicoot. No, no. That's for our next category. The next category, which is best, best Skyrim? Skyrim of the year. <laughs> well. I would have to say Skyrim Switch. But but hear me out. Skyrim VR, though. I would um, like... I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I'm going to nominate the old girls online, Morrowind. <laughs> Morrowind. That did come out this year. That was a real thing. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with my guns, and I'm saying Skyrim uh, for the Switch. Wait, this is the dumbest one. They all lose, because we're over Skyrim, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's I, no mean, I haven't played it but i'd play the one on the switch so yeah i would say the switch is, if, if we are gonna give a winner i would <laughs> switch because it's portable now, now 10 years later on the go. and 10 years later and we're still debating skyrim <laughs> skyrim make a new elder scrolls that's the lesson here <laughs> Make a new Elder Scrolls. Make a new Elder Scrolls. All right. What else you got? All right. And you got, got a category? It. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, my category is um, the most game that's like Breath of the Wild. Skyrim for the Switch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Super Mario it's even Odyssey. Got it. it's Super even Mario got Odyssey. Odyssey yeah, was, mm. it's Obviously, it's Super it Mario Odyssey. Open worlds, ridiculous amount of collectibles, mm -hmm. lovable main okay. character who never actually speaks. How? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Princesses <laughs> everywhere. Um, if I was going for a real category, it would be the game that has been most improved on by being made um, larger and more open world. So obviously you've got Mario Odyssey, you've got Breath of the Wild. Games that have been older games, you know, that have had a lot of new mechanics and stuff added to them that's made them a better game. Because you can say Breath of the mm. Wild is, you know, the game of the year, but then yeah. you've, got to, you've got to ask, has that been more improved than, like, older Mario games now Mario Odyssey is out? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dang, that's a really good one, actually. Yeah, and actually you bringing in a real discussion topic and not just nonsense. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, um, my next yeah. one was real. I <laughs> thank you. Um, I actually really did like Breath of the Wild. I think that was a huge break from the normal Zelda formula. Although you could yeah. argue that it's actually very similar to the original uh, Legend of Zelda because that was open world, and also it didn't matter what order you did the dungeons in in that one either. Each one would give you That's something true. new, but you could actually do them in any order, which is the same kind of concept that they brought to Breath of the Wild. That's true, but I think over, if it's been more than 20 years, then, you know, you can class it as a new game mechanic, really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And especially because every Legend of Zelda in between has been very different from that first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's true of, like, all the, le like... There was a time, I think, since, like, Ocarina of Time, when they followed, they had, like, a very formulaic nature of just, like, here yeah. are the first three or four dungeons you have to do. Here's the break to get a whole bunch of side quests done. Here's the next set of dungeons, and then final boss. And, I th yeah. Well, I think Mario was always very like that as well, since um, Mario 64. Here's, you know, here's a level. It's connected to, here's your hub world. Here's other levels. Please collect 700 of these MacGuffins, and now you're going to fight a boss. And, but yeah. and even though Mario Odyssey does do that as well, in in a way, it's mm. still improved on compared to any of a Mario game. Like, I mean, I do love Mario 64, but I'd say that Mario Odyssey was probably my favorite Mario game. Mm -hmm. of I all do time. think I do think that Odyssey 
builds off of some of the stuff they were already trying with, say, Galaxy. Like, if you play Super Mario Galaxy, I yeah. think that they they had a lot of interesting new mechanics to that game that really, like, tried to test out what the Switch was about and what you could do with it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I'm. But the, the um, Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath didn't feel like the games before them on the Wii U because they didn't seem as yeah. gimmicky. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. The, like they, the, the thing is with these the games that were on the Wii U, I think that classes with most of the Wii U games and the Wii games is that they were all so gimmicky based on the console. So, you know, um, Skyward Sword, you know, you had to use the Wiimote to move your sword and stuff like that. So mm. this the games that have been released now don't feel as gimmicky. They don't rely on the hardware. They they've now started relying on, you know, updated, you know, themes and mechanics, mechanics and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. So which one do you think has had the most improvement? Like which one? It doesn't even have to be Mario Odyssey and Legend of Zelda. I think, you know, there are other games that have been released recently based on older games in the series that have improved on because of the mechanics rather than just being just gimmicky mm. um see if i i would probably say breath of the wild did more for yeah. zelda than mario odyssey did for mario even though that you know i said mario odyssey was my favorite like mario game mm-hmm. i still think breath of the wild did a lot more to improve zelda and bring out zelda for a, a wider audience and mario odyssey did that too but because mario is so well known and i i think that Breath of the Wild just brought Zelda more to the spotlight of people who, you know, don't know much about Zelda or don't know anything about Zelda. And, you know, it's now become more accessible to other people. Whereas Mario Odyssey, I think because it it still has the same kind of Mario-esque feel to it. Yeah. You know, I think Zelda has definitely improved its kind of fan base more. I think it's, you know, grew more because of Breath of the Wild. So I think definitely. the Breath of the Wild should be, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I just don't think like... I think that Nintendo has always been very good at trying to, like, innovate in a way that other companies I don't think do as much. Like Assassin's Creed, right? Like, even Assassin's Creed Origins, from what I've heard back from people, it's like, there are some things that are very different from an Assassin's Creed game, but also there's a lot there that's still just like, oh, it's Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Yeah. I think with um, I think you have to take with the new games is how much of the percentage is the same and how much of it is stuff is actually new. Right. And I think that's how you decide if a game has become better because of the things that have been added to it, or is it just the, the same bloated game but with more gimmicky stuff added to it? You know, yeah, stuff right. that they're never going to go back to. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, with the old like Zelda the one to one sword fighting. Mm-hmm. That being said, yeah. I don't think the next Zelda will be the open world adventure we got in Breath of the Wild. Oh no, yeah, I don't no, think that. Either. But. but... I think Breath of the Wild stands a lot better on its legs as its own thing than Mario Odyssey does. Because Mario Odyssey, at the end of the day, it still feels like a Mario game a lot more than yeah. Breath of the Wild feels like a Zelda game. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, that's yeah. very true. Because I would say most of like what came out of Mario Odyssey that people are like, oh, this is interesting, is things like... Like, the capture is a really cool mechanic, but also, like, New Donk City, there's photorealistic people here, and there's a T-Rex, and there's From a Nintendo the dog wearing 2. an Indiana Jones hat that you can play fetch with. <laughs> like, it was a lot and of, I like... Think Go on. Sorry. Um, I was just saying, I was going to say, like, I think with Mario Odyssey, is that it's a bit like Mario Galaxy in terms of they'll never, you know, the whole hat cap, you know, Cappy capturing yeah. people and controlling them, they'll never go back to that unless they make Mario Odyssey 2. Whereas I think with Zelda the Breath of the Wild, the things that they've kind of brought to this game, the new stuff they brought to the game, they can probably continue on in the series. Wherever I think with Mario Odyssey, that's not going to happen mm. yeah. at all. Yeah. So, Well, like for 3D yeah. Mario, though, that's also been like the thing for him. He's always gotten a new thing every time. Mario 64 was 3D. Mario Sunshine, he had Flood. Mario Galaxy, he had the like spin thing and stars and planetoids yeah but mario 64 was more than just about being 3d because before like it was the transition from 2d to 3d because mario 64 was like huge and that they totally redefined like what a mario game was i'm not saying mario 64 wasn't a big deal but i'm saying it didn't have some extra gimmick because the gimmick was it's 3d now yeah Mm -hmm. 
yeah, that's how it kind of that's how it differentiates between games it was, from before it. It yeah. was like a yeah. paradigm shift, and not just ah, we're doing something different. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Joe, you're falling into the logo a little more, by the way. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> so you know. sorry. Sorry. Right. Sorry. 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 Who sorry. else has a category they want to throw out? Joe, you um, said you had a good um, one. I, I, have, I have some good ones. Uh, do we want the like positive one or a negative one? Uh, negative. Yeah, yeah let's go with a negative. All right. All right. This is uh, the Was That It Award for most lackluster launch of a game. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Oh, it will the answer be For Honor? <laughs> <laughs> the That's game that had like super hype mechanics and then fell flat on its face. Yep. I mean, that that's definitely one contender. Uh, did um, PUBG launch? Because I would also say PUBG is probably... I like I PUBG yeah, I wouldn't launch. call that... I mean... I was going to say that I, was a really launch. popular game. Yeah, it's a popular game, but the launch, it's not like, we're launched! It's like... Launched That's yet. because they haven't yeah. launched yet. Exactly. <laughs> Officially, well, yeah. they haven't actually launched. So oh, I, I thought they did. Counted. I thought they did. I thought they did. I mean, it's still in beta, isn't it? That that is still classed as beta. Um, Let me take. Um, I don't know. Let me go to the store page, because I think like, they did I, have I the 1.0 yeah. update. No, yeah, no, it's out of early access. Yeah. Yeah. So to so be I'm, fair, I'm it is saying, technically lackluster, but I think that was just because it was not necessarily disappointing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. So like, games it's, didn't it's have out. a lot of hype behind it. Yeah. Or didn't have hype of, but didn't deliver. There's a little hype behind it, but the, yeah. It's a different take on it than For Honor was, which had all this hype and then it came out and everyone... Eh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the thing is, there have been some... There have been some, like, massively big games this year that have been, you know, that have become super popular. I can't think of... I can't really think of a really, really bad game. Ukulele. Um, is another one. Oh, yeah. actually, yeah. Uh, but I hear that the Switch version of ukulele is much better. And you know what? The, here's the thing with ukulele is that they Mass actually Mass Effect Andromeda. Even though the even though the yes. launch might have kind of sucked, they did go back and they fixed that game. Like they fixed oh, the yeah, camera, no. they fixed the bugs, they fixed the game. It was just yeah, people... no, it's a good it's a good game, but yeah, it had a lacking launch. Here's what I think. I think it was, I think it's one of those situations where it's like, um, it, it's like a hat in time versus ukulele, right? Ukulele was like, everyone said they wanted an old school 64 game, which is what mm -hmm. ukulele was. And then people played yeah. it and then they were just like, this isn't what I remember. This isn't what I wanted. And it's like, well, it, it yeah. was it it is a Nintendo sixty four game. But it is game. what you wanted. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's it. You remembered it differently. You remembered it and better yeah. than Hat it was. Hat in time. Hat in time was a modern game that just gave you that nostalgic feeling. Of yeah. Hat what in it time. Was like to play those games. Yeah. It was yeah. like it was like it had oh, collection in it, right? But a lot of the collection didn't really matter to like one hundred percent in the game. And like mm -hmm. it had the quirky characters and the fun levels, but it was never like super tedious or anything. Like. It, it just had, like, the feel, but it was more like what people remembered it being as opposed to what it actually was. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons I yeah. love A Hat in Time. Good stuff. We'll talk Ooh. about that game more later. I love that game. I just thought of another one for the, the last category, actually. Sorry. Oh, yeah? Was this like Resident Evil 7. Oh, yeah. Resident Evil 7 would also. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that game. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I kind of forgot about it, too. And, but, you know, Resident Evil is also a series i mean i know that was the whole point of the last category but resident evil is a series that's changed a lot too because the first one was really just like walking around and those like fixed camera angles yeah and the and fixed every camera angles. And everyone is really bad somehow somehow he drew has a new camera angle always bad <laughs> it's always like some <laughs> wide screenshot and you're like in the background somewhere trying to talk to and then it's like oh oh i'm that spec okay yeah now it looks like a person yeah. The thing is, the first three Resident Evil games are my favorite Resident Evil game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they're so good. I don't mind the camera but angle. But they're so fun to tear apart, too. Honestly, I... I think Resident Evil became bloated after, like... Okay, so five... Oh, and... I thought you were going to say four. I thought you were going to call out four. I'm like, oh. I know. 
I, I couldn't I couldn't handle the handle the backdraft of that. No, um, like five, and I didn't enjoy six. Mm-hmm. Like six, just mm, it take when you get a survival horror game and you take it into the action horror genre, it never works. It just it yeah. just doesn't work. Um, oh, by the way, games that kind of had hype, but I didn't see, I didn't really see any ref, uh, like kind of that were just a bit meh. Tell me if I'm wrong. Evil Within Two. Oh, you're absolutely right. Yes. You know what? Like, I, I, like, that game had hype like months before it came out, but then it just kind of mm-hmm. came out. Well, it was because yeah. it, it just like Peter, like everyone was super excited for it. it. I think it was E3. They showed off like a really big trailer for it and everyone was hyped. But E3 is like in the middle of July and they didn't really like show it off or advertise it that much. And honestly, if you watch it, it like Evil Within is kind of Resident Evil. <laughs> like... It's 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 a bit of Resident Evil, Silent Hill. It's a bit of every Uncharted. It's all thrown in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that was another game, beca- and I think the reason it didn't do so well because, to be honest, thinking about, I don't really remember that much hype behind it when it first. Well, maybe when it first, like months before it was actually released, but mm. um, it's the same. Like, I don't know if you guys ever actually played it, but it it basically felt like number one. It was it was more open. They tried to make it open world, right. but then you just kind of felt like you were playing the first one again. Yeah, but with jump scares. I I didn't play the first one, but I'm familiar enough with it to know that it was mostly in like corridors and stuff, as opposed to yeah, it the was... second one, which is like here's an open area, and then you have to go through the marrow to get to the next open area. Yeah, and, pretty yeah. much. Um, I did enjoy the first one. I did enjoy the first one. I wasn't as hyped as a lot of people were about it because I know. People Really high, but I, 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 I'm a massive fan of Silent Hill, so I kind of look at that game and think, the fuck, you're not a Silent Hill game, but you look like one. So I was just kind of pretty salty about the game in general, R.I.P. Silent Hills. But um, yeah, the second one didn't do anything to Death improve. Stranding, though. Death, Death Stranding, Stranding, though. Death Stranding, though. What does still, it you know, mean? What does it knows? mean? I'm still, like, unsure about that whole thing. But I'm probably still salty about Silent Hills again. Yeah. But, yeah. To be fair, Kojima really wanted that. I know. Yeah. So did Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reed. Yep. Oh, wow. But Konami wanted the Silent Hill franchise more. Apparently. <laughs> and then they made a pachinko machine! There was another one I saw. Oh, what about Crash Bandicoot? What do you think about that? I think the, it had a pretty remake? big launch. Yeah, that oh, had a like, huge it, launch. It had a big well, launch, but like... People loved that game. Yeah. Well, but there yeah, was like, just that, like that was there was just like a lot of like internet backlash almost immediately because they were just like, like again this hard. isn't the game I remember it yeah. being. <laughs> yeah, that's that it's in the way of Cuphead though. It's like yeah. it's a game people super feel, super liked it, but it was really I hard. Feel like, I feel like we need it. to make another yeah. category game that well, isn't how we remember it. <laughs> well, I was going to say for up and ever. <laughs> I was going to say we could go to my other category, which was most controversial game. Ooh, uh, I had one more. I had one more nominee for the was that it? Yeah. Lawbreakers. And oh. Lawbreakers. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> Both yeah, um, fell flat. Yeah, no, those. Here's the thing. They're all losers. <laughs> they, they all are, exactly, had, yeah. Well, winners, yeah. I guess. We know you came out. We yeah. may not have known it when it happened, but we do now. <laughs> but eventually. We found out. All right, so All you right. want to do what most controversial game? Battlefront 2. Yeah. Oh, like my, my initial nominee was definitely. Battlefront 2, most controversial game. Do you have a second uh, nominee? <laughs> no, I don't. That was just... Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy? I don't know. Ukulele? <laughs> Ukulele. <laughs> You can lay um, up there. I, I, the Battlefront, Battlefront has to be. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can't really actually, think of anything that's actually, like. Actually, right now, Destiny Two is also facing a huge controversy. Yeah. Also, about, you know, uh, Andromeda. Uh, they're locking a lot of stuff behind DLC that people were able to do before the DLC was launched. Middle Earth. Ooh, that's bad. Shadow of War. No, nah, that's just one. shittiest loot boxes. Yeah, but it literally think... got shadowed by Battlefront 2. <laughs> yeah. Shadow yeah. of War was overshadowed. I think Andromeda would also be like a strong contender as well. 
What was? That's true. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, because yeah, people probably. were pretty meh the about most that. broken game ever. <sighs> yeah. I'm so Pretty sad. Good. These were all games I wanted to be so yeah, good. Yeah, I know. Oh. The... Y'all were just hey. too... You, you, you guys were just riding too much of the hype train. Oh, speaking of I will Sonic say, Forces. Yay! Sonic I will say, though, Forces. Battlefront 2, good, yeah. good campaign mode. Good that campaign was just mode mediocre. Mode. No one was like... No one was like controversy. It's like, oh no, eh, we knew it would be. But, but that also oh, belongs in the last launch. category. The what was that category? Oh, yeah, yeah was that it? Yeah, was that it? Yeah, that's true. So I just, I still try to love it too much to actually nominate it. Honestly, I just forgot about it. All right, what was your positive category, Joe? Let's do a positive now. Yeah. Uh, the game you most wanted to play but never got around to. Ah. Ooh, so many. Uh, uh no. life is strange before the storm yes <clears throat> i never got around to playing that and it, uh, it's 11 bucks is, on steam right now and i'm so tempted Ooh, anything yeah. on the nintendo switch <laughs> it's yes awful. literally anything on I nintendo switch one. i still gotta so play bad. breath of the wild <gasps> janky leave leave your own podcast leave more have it though leave your own podcast yeah. how have you not, not played switch. it he because doesn't have I don't have a Switch. You bought the game but didn't own the console. Just recently, no, Black just Friday, it. I bought I bought the, I bought the game because it was the okay. it was the okay, collector's yeah. edition with the guide and the map, and I really wanted that. So yeah. I could just imagine, you know, like um, how, before the Switch came out, people were getting like um, the tablets and just attaching like two remotes to the side. I thought it was kind of useful. <laughs> Why isn't something working in there? <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay, let me see. Uh, most wanted to play, but didn't. Again, oh, most wanted to play, but didn't. Um, yeah. yeah, the game you most wanted to play, but never got around to. Let yeah, I really, I really wanted to get on Life is Strange, and I'm so surprised that I've avoided any spoilers for it, especially yeah. now that the last chapter's out. It's yeah, good. It's like heavy into that Shakespeare I mean, nonsense, but, and but, that's my jam. But also, but also, how do you spoil a game that's a prequel to the other one? Like, you know that, you know, you it's true, but I mean, you can make either, choices. Well, she's chef. either gonna die or she doesn't. <laughs> um, did I have? Um, I don't think I have one I bought that I never got around to playing. I'm just saying. oh, Night in the Woods. Oh. I also really wanted to be about Night in the Woods, but I never bought For, it. So. Uh, it was good stuff, the and the weird autumn could... updates out now. So I need to get back to that and check out that weird autumn yeah. update. For that games weird, I could play that autumn. don't involve me buying a whole new system, uh, probably Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon or. Uh, Fire Emblem, Echoes, Shadows of Valencia. Mm, Those are mm. my two big ones. Um, yeah, any other ones people want to throw out there? I've kind of played all the games I wanted to play this year. Well, good for you. Thank you. Good. It helps having all the consoles. Actually, Jake, I'm just I trying don't to like scroll. I out. just need one. What? <laughs> I can catch them all. I don't think Weird Autumn's out yet, actually. Uh, are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure they updated it. <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to like scroll up and down this list real fast and see what's going on. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I actually did really Horizon well play Zero that. Dawn. Here's the thing. Like, oh, most, of the games, most of the games that I'm just like, oh, yeah, Uncharted I want to play 4. that. It, that it's stuff year? that I watched other people play. Last so... Year. Um, so I got it this year. Um, I feel like I didn't right super there. miss out. I haven't, I haven't played, played it. it. Except for I Breath of the Wild. It. I didn't watch anyone play that. Um, Star Fractured Trek Bridge Crew. You know what? The, the Fractured Butthole could also kind of fall into super hype not really talked about. Yeah. Maybe. That's true. I don't, I don't know. It, it, launched, like, it launched pretty big. The, the thing is, though. really liked it. Like, when, um, when the original came out, though, can you remember, like, all the hype behind that yeah. and how, like, people... It was a it was a big thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think this one has been as successful as the first one though. Like Which is such a shame. It's such a good game. Like if you like South Park and you like uh like that sort of RPG. Like yeah, they yeah. improved the combat so much. And if you like superheroes and just total parodying of superheroes, so good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, it's pretty good. I watched my friend Nick beat uh Morgan Freeman. He's the secret super hard boss. Of course he is. Good. 
Um, you know, there is a game that we haven't mentioned, and I'm just going to throw it in here just because it might not pop up in any category, but it was an amazing game. Just little nightmares. Throw yes. little nightmares out there. True. Yeah, it is I'm a not good a, game. I haven't played it, and I would like to play it. So yes, I, that yeah, is so that good. does work in this category. Also, Golf yeah. Story. I didn't play Golf Story, but I heard really good things about that game. Also, Injustice Two was another one I really wanted, <gasps> oh, but I never got such to. Such a good game. Such a good game. I, just, I want it, but it's so expensive. Good. Did anyone play Dream Daddy, a dating dad simulator? <laughs> no. Well, no. We, we all want to play it, but none of us want to put it on our channel. I, I, I would. I mean, I'd, I'd probably be in it. All right, we it. got our volunteer. We got our we volunteer. Got our volunteer. Dream Daddy. It's, mm, I don't know, it's, it, the games games like that, like I'm playing Doki Doki uh, Literature Club. This, oh, I can't even say Oh, that horrifying are you, mess. Are, are, you, are you sleeping at night? <laughs> literature, literature club. I, I've, to be honest, I've only got through like the first twenty minutes of it. I've only got to the bit where you're putting words into the book. I haven't played any more oh, since. So it's not, it's not scary yet. May I? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe there's some like underlining something that I haven't caught onto yet. But it's like games like that where you have to read a lot of text. Like with Undertale, I struggled. Um, uh, so dating, Danny Dream Simulator. I don't think I'd be able to play that game because there's so much talking. Yeah, yeah, that's so the biggest thing with like talking. any of those t any of those games where it's like mostly conversation and you're just like, oh yeah. my god. And yeah, I all uh, about it. So go hard. watch, go watch Chroma Squad over my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, the pigeon dating game that I don't remember the name of that you did. Hot Hot boy 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 three episodes of and continue. Yeah, same three episodes Hot and. Boyfriend. I like that whenever you first meet a pigeon, it's just like, here's what they would probably look like if they were a human person, <laughs> yeah, just to make it a little less form. weird. But whenever I started watching it, I was just like, oh, okay, so she's also a bird, and they just all go to bird school. It's like, nope. no, I'm a human, nope. and nope. I go to bird school. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Weird premise. Oh, goodness. So um, along those lines, I've got one most confusing game. And my two nominees are FNAF and uh, Hello Neighbor. Um, uh, what confuses you about FNAF? Like FNAF, okay, not necessarily like, I'm not confused because I've been following like a lot of the theorists. Like game He's been watching that, Game well, Theory. He's been well, watching no, Game Theory. I've been watching Game Theory, but like he hasn't touched FNAF 6 yet. I mean, he played the game, but he hasn't done like a theory to tie it all into his theories. Um, but I've been watching other YouTubers talk about it, and it kind of lines up with a lot of stuff. And especially with FNAF 6, it did kind of tie up some loose ends. Are you saying confusing but... in the way that you don't see the appeal? No, or... confusing as in, like, the overall lore is just bonkers and confusing AF. And I guess I should also throw on Kingdom Hearts to that mix. Yes. <laughs> Sure. But I love Kingdom Hearts and I get Kingdom Hearts. Um, and I get FNAF, but Hello Neighbor is just like, what the hell's going on with that game? Well, first from of all, like Hello the, Neighbor literally the earliest just pre alpha. <laughs> well, yeah, but from the earliest pre alpha to like now, it's just been like, what the fuck is this game? Well, to be fair, you're also game? basing it off of essentially game theory because those are two games that game theory just like makes up war. Yeah, for. but I never watched anything on Hello, Hello Neighbor. I never watched any of the, the theories for Hello Neighbor. Basically, it's, it's that like... the neighbor made a deal with the devil. That's essentially what people think the lore of that game is. Which may be true. I mean, I mean, he's kind of um, um, and things make have, no sense. I have the most confusing game plot. Yeah, yeah. Pit people. <laughs> what is going okay, yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, pit what, people. What is pit people, guys? Yes. Like what? What's happening in that game? Specifically, what's up with Yosef and what is his whole backstory? Why does Yosef he have a brother-in-law who's a parasite character. who lives in like an eldritch god? <laughs> in Chog. Yes. Uh, Hashtag Chog life. Hashtag Chog what life. Interesting looking game. I've never heard of this game before. So well, clearly you don't people... watch janky shenanigans. Yeah, clearly. I haven't posted an episode of Pit People I in a while because Joe and I, I haven't I know. haven't played it in a while. But um, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's by the Behemoth. Who, first of all, the Behemoth is great. Battle Block Theater, Castle Crashers, and Pit People. They just it, yeah, they looks, they're very... amazing, and I love them. And I've talked to them, and they're amazing people. And um. 
but yeah, pit people. It's it's crazy, and I don't know what's going on. And I think there's a story that we still haven't played, by the way, Joe. I think they updated it, so there's more yeah, story now. Yeah, I think they have too. I think they have too. We need to play more. But yeah, yeah. you just play it, and you're just oh, like, we're, this we're is the most ridiculous thing. But we we're just gonna wait till launch. You know what? You know what that reminds me of? Let's mm. go to favorite character in a game, and. In the spirit of what we're oh. just talking about, I'm choosing Ashley Birch as Sophia in Pit People. Sophia? Sophia. Sophia. The Sophia. Recrutador. Recrutador. Sophia. Sophia. Um, Haley Joel Osment is Sora 2.8. <laughs> oh my god. For up for the rapper. Seconds. For up for the rapper. Uh, no, I'll go with I'll, I'll go with six from Little Nightmares. Good choice. Six is a really I... interesting game. There's also the Runaway this, Kid from the DLC. This kind of gets rid of one of my mm. categories. <laughs> but I'm going to go with Hat Kid from A Hat in Time. Yes. <laughs> hat Kid is kick butt. I love Hat, hat Kid's kid. the best. Cappy. Hat kid's cool. Cappy's also Cappy. Mm, Cappy's I'll tell you this. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, we could do this entire category of just... Hold on. I'm revising. Favorite. Hold on. Let me get there. Ashley Birch <laughs> character. No. <laughs> you got Favorite Ashley Birch character. Yeah. Oh, you you got to. you got Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. You have Sophia from Pit People. You have Chloe Price in Life is Strange. Oh, Chloe Price, hands down. Yeah. We could do an entire category of just your favorite Ashley Birch characters. <laughs> Chun Li from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, I'm going with Chun Li. I'm taking Chun Li on this. I'm one. going Chloe Price. I'm double downing, du doubling down. Double downing. Uh, and then we've <laughs> got <laughs> Nebula from the Guardians of the Galaxy Telltale series. I did not. Uh, know. Really? Still Chloe Price. Still Chloe. Good one too. Uh, I don't even know what all she's done this year. I just know that she's done a ton. Yeah. And we every time I have, you said Ashley Birch, didn't you? Yeah, I said Ashley Birch. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those things where it's just like, I find a character and I'm just like, I love that character. And that's like voiced by Ashley Birch. And I'm like, oh my God, what? That makes sense. <laughs> that's why. She's also in Dota 2. I think you like Ashley Birch. What? I think you might just like Ashley Birch. I mean, she's yeah, a, getting, she's a, I, 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 she's I, I, a, I an amazing human like being. So yes, yes, I do. Okay. I do like okay. Ashley Birch. <laughs> She's wonderful. Did you see the seriousness in his eyes there? He, like, he was, yeah, he was, she's an amazing human being. Yeah, he was. Okay, yes. Yes, and, Janky. And if, I, okay, and if, I, down, ever, Janky. if I ever met Ashley Birch, I would want a photo and be like, I met Ashley Birch. I'm so glad he ended that sentence with photo. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. no, no. It just it sounded so aggressive that I didn't want it to be fuck. No. That's no, yeah. that's not the way that sentence if I meet is. So, <clears throat> getting off this kind of I don't want to be the to horrifying save, to person. Save Jinky, to save Janky, to get off this conversation, best DLC added to a game? None of it. Ooh. I don't believe in DLC. Well, I mean, um, but still, like. Come with the game DLC or don't come at all. That well, episode that's true, but Ignis, I mean, though. Yeah, so something like Episode Ignis or literally any of the extra characters in Dead by Daylight, anything that they've done to Overwatch. Oh, that, that that's not uh, DLC. That's an addition. Any of the chapters. And that's, another, that's one of my categories. You guys are stealing my categories. I'm sorry. Outlast uh, DLC? The new... Do they make Outlast DLC for Outlast 2? Nah, I don't know. I didn't play enough of the game to know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joel. Oh, I didn't touch also, it Also, the answer... The answer, by the way, is XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. <laughs> For the best DLC? Yeah. Um, maybe. I don't know. Let me, uh, let me think. It's the biggest DLC oh, anyway. It's you know what was good it. DLC? I do have one. Um, one that was added to... Uh, dang, what was the name of the game? Final Station? There was a Final Station DLC. It was real good. I don't even know that game. It's like this... It's a story about how you drive a, a death train through like a post-apocalyptic world oh, where there might be yeah, zombies yeah, 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 or yeah, aliens, yeah, yeah. but you never know what's actually going on because the entire story is told like in the background. Anyway, they released there some you. DLC called The Only Traitor, and I've been playing it. It's real good. Does Uncharted The Lost Legacy count? <laughs> oh, Outlast 1 DLC. That's what they meant. Okay. 
Apparently, it I would say it. yes. No, it, no, it doesn't. It's a standalone title. But I agree originally, with you, but we're talking 2017 DLC. I, 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 I'm sorry. Which uh, one did you say? I said Uncharted: The Lost Legacy. <laughs> I was making a joke. I was doing a bit. I was doing uh, a bit. I haven't played it um, yet, but perhaps Weird Autumn. I don't know. I don't. I don't like keep up with DLC for games. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just pulled up Night in the Woods to look up this Weird Autumn thing, and on Steam, one of the recent news items is a review that says "Sad Millennial Simulator: Night in the Woods gets old and new content." It's uh. I mean, that's nice. pretty. Pretty wow. Description for that game, actually. It's yeah. true. It yeah. does make me sad about my life. Yeah. I really, ghetto. I really can't disagree. No. Uh, um, where, where is the lie, though? Where We've is got the lie, though? Curse of Osiris from Destiny 2? That's oh, true. No, worse that happens. Than I would say the last Jedi expansion to Battlefront 2, like the campaign story that they added, uh, to, they they added with it was pretty good. Yeah. How much was it? Uh, it was three chapters um, to the campaign, um, but it it takes it to Answer the, the current, current... What? Answer the question. How much was it? It was free. How, how much did it free. cost? Oh, free. I free. thought you meant like how much of a story was it? That was... Yeah. No, that was they their... did... It's well, Battlefront the 2 now. They did free DLC I don't believe it. to yeah, offset I don't believe the loot boxes. I don't believe yeah. it. That was the trade-off. There was free DLC. Yeah. But... Unlike, unlike Middle Earth Shadow of War, where they're like, why not yeah. both? Love DLC you buy and loot boxes It'll be in perfect. a single player game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Middle Earth. Why oh, Middle Earth. So okay. bad. Why couldn't you? You could have been good. Any other categories? Um, hottest well, female in video games of what this is year. It? Rabbit. Hottest Peach. female. <laughs> Rabbit, rabbit peach, nice. Rabbit peach. I agree with that. That's true. I was going to go with Pauline. In. With what? Also Pauline. Pauline. Oh, from, from Odyssey. She that's, wears a big fair. red hat. She <laughs> sings jazz music. That's fair. It's Janky's ideal woman. Yeah. She's voiced by... Um, she's basically Carmen uh, Sandiego, but she sings jazz. I mean... There we go. Yeah. Kate Higgins? Is it Kate Higgins? That sounds like a housewife. Who's Kate Higgins? Uh, the voice of Pauline. Yes. Oh. <laughs> she was a real person. I thought there was just a character in a game called Paula no. Higgins. Was like, no, no, Kate Higgins. She's uh, the yes. voice of Kate Higgins. She's also she worked the it. voice of Tails in Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Poor. But she, poor she also Tails. sings Jump Up Superstar. There's also the main yeah. character of Lost Legacy, whose name I can't remember, but she's delightfully English. Which one? Nadine or... Um... Oh, Chloe? Chloe, yes. Chloe and Nadine, that's it. The delightfully English uh, badass who just throws people off roofs. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other one's Laura Bailey. And the other one's Laura Bailey. <laughs> that's all I, I love Laura Bailey. Her. She's so cool. In everything. Every... Yeah, everything. Just amazing my nomination for that would be for that category i'm trying to think of all the games that i played this year that amy rose sonic mania yes. <laughs> sonic. she wasn't in sonic mania <laughs> was she not she wasn't oh. in sonic oh so sonic amy forces. rose sonic, she was in forces. sonic forces sonic forces okay. that was it sorry I got to next time. um <laughs> one two three omega sonic forces i was about to be real sad <laughs> yeah it's like what she wasn't what she what? Wasn't Sonic Forces. Oh no! If you're going Sonic, you gotta say Rouge the Bat. Rouge the Bat. You gotta at least, you gotta at least commit but, to the bit. Uh, Amy's more homely. I uh, don't know. <laughs> Rouge just seemed like you should be too busy stealing stuff. Oh, Ribbon Girl from Ribbon Arms. Girl? Oh. From Arms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. There's Wait. probably there's probably is a real the nominee somewhere in Persona Five, but I don't play Persona Five, so I have no. Oh, uh, yeah, thingy from Persona 5 as well. Uh... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> She's got an English name. I can't remember her name. Mm. I'm playing it as well, like, right now. What's her name? Anne. Arn. That's it. There you go. She's a very attractive lady. There's also Rachel Amber from no. Life is Strange Before the Storm. <laughs> Who is a crazy uh... person? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. She's dead now. It doesn't matter. She- yeah. and spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers if you didn't play the first. Like, Look, yeah, here's spoilers the thing. if you didn't play that game from like two years ago. Yeah. I've been watching someone play before the storm and every time they get to a choice they're just like but does it really matter though because this Maybe is super matter. sad because we know how it ends for in these the people. end yeah. it doesn't even matter uh, they just like should we help nathan and then it's like oh game. that's right that's what Ridiculous. nathan oh, oh wait I... sorry telltale s game not telltale game i think yeah. it was a telltale game Who oh then it? it would be life is strange hands down what was it ea did life yeah. is strange no not ea square mm. enix yeah, Square Squeenix. 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 I get the two mixed up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like any other games. Hmm. How about best port you know what? or remaster release this year? Be- oh, Papa Rapper wins. Papa Rapper wins. I'm gonna say I... Night Trap, the 25th anniversary. Oh Check. my God, that happened too. Yes. I'm going to say Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. The, the, the Steam port really? of Sphinx really? and the Cursed Mummy. The You're one that you that like yelled Kingdom about Heart every night and for like Kingdom two Heart's weeks. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and, and 2.5 well, and that... Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. I'm, I, have, I... I have a different category for those. Most oh my ridiculous God. sequel no, no. re-release, but I'm was also limiting necessary. us. We are doing two more categories, and we are moving on to Star Wars. This this nonsense has kept going. I am being the moderator that this that this podcast needs me to be. We get two more categories. And we are going on. Most anticipated third title in a sequence from no, Square Enix. No, 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 we're not no. doing that. <laughs> because you're gonna say Kingdom Hearts three, and it's going to be pointless. Someone offer up a yeah, category. Ant, you got one. Joe, you got one. Um, if Ant has one, you go first. <laughs> the most emotional moment in a video game. Ooh. Ooh. Got it. Wait. Go ahead. Technically came out last year, but it was like the end of last year. What game was it? <laughs> Ow. Bit my, bit my, bit my bit there. What game was it? The credit roll to Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, I haven't even beat the game, but yeah, the credits. Not even, not even the ending. The credit. The most I'll emotional. tell you what, though. If you played Hellblade, Senwa's Sacrifice, I didn't. There I were didn't. some seriously emotional moments in that game too. The most emotional moment in a game was once again Little Nightmares, and spoilers, of course. But when Eleven. 11 that's that's stranger things when stranger six things. why do these ladies have bloody numbers for names um when she gets to the dwarf gnome and then eats him that's probably like the most it doesn't have to be like a sad emotion but that was the most yeah <gasps> what the yeah. fuck is happening okay like, yeah that was yeah i just mm, that was crazy i, I did not like that that made me sad there's also um There's also, what am I trying to think of? Oh, the cutscenes from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm, not in English. Oh, not in English, no. Mm, not in English, no. But in Japanese. Because, like, oh, Zelda's English voice actress just... I'm sure she did a very good job, but she kind of ruins a lot of moments with her really bad crying. Hey, with so... here. Sorry, guys. So, does this conclude the 2017 Pop Culture Award Show? I think it does. I don't have anything Woo! better than that. that Don't tie off. So, here's here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to go to a quick delay so that we can all take a break and use the facilities or anything we need to do. And then we will come back and talk about Star Wars and get into Woo! that. I believe we've all seen the, the last spoilers. Yes. All the spoilers. So if you if don't you want haven't spoilers, seen the movie, okay. goodbye. Spoilers. Goodbye. Much spoilers. All right. We shall. I'm something for every nerd. We shall be back in, after these brief messages. Messages? Messages? There are no messages. The advert comes up now. Text message. <laughs> wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if everyone was ready again or not. Yeah, we're all good. Go. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just Yo. I'm just still holding for General Hux. Hey, okay. 
It was all a bit. You probably should have typed that to me to let me know, because I was pretty sure you were on yeah, the phone. No, yeah, no. We're, we're all... I, I gave you, like, a thumbs up, like, go. And he was like... Mine doesn't have batteries. <laughs> Perfect. I couldn't find a lightsaber. I mean, I for... Perfect. You are a Disney property, so that's fine. He yeah. basically became Star Wars in Ragnarok. Yeah, that's true. All right. Basically. Basically. Much like in Ragnarok. All right, I'm going to put up the the stuff. Also, good night to everyone who's going off in chat. Um, yes. But I'm going to put up the spoiler alert so you guys know we're talking spoilers for The Last Jedi. So spoilers will be spoilers. discussed. Spoilers! Spoilers! All right, so... Who wants to kick it off? Who wants so to say words? If you don't want spoilers, leave. Um, still okay. holding for General Hux. Still holding for General Hux. Um, okay, so for me, uh, I'm not sure if anyone watched my initial reactions video um, of how I was just kind of like very meh mm -hmm. about the movie coming out of it. But then after seeing it again yesterday, I'm. S and after much thinking about it and, you know, contemplating, it's like. It's not still meh. I like it and I enjoy it. But I think pretty much what we were discussing last night, that coming out of Rogue One mm -hmm. um, and everyone and, and critics kind of being like, that's the greatest Star Wars film since the originals, um, that, uh, you know, coming from that going to this, it's kind of like... Wait, hold on. They said like, here's that Rogue, Rogue One, One here's... was the greatest Star Wars movie since the originals? Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't um, think that that's true. Uh, it was. A good I agree movie. with uh, the movie. I think uh, I agree. I agree with the movie. Um, with Star Wars: The Last Jedi, you have to come away from the movie to kind of appreciate it. I think yeah. with the, with the long, oh, you know, we're slowly getting away from, you know, the Last Order. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with all that it seems it's so it kind of seems slow paced as you're watching it and i think that does put the movie like it a lot of points are lost because of that but i yeah. think when you come away with it and see it for what it is afterwards you know when you can talk about all the hidden easter eggs and all the you know all the good parts yeah. i think then it becomes a much more satisfying movie yeah. but i think when you're watching it because it is so slow paced or because we have all these random bits of story that kind of go somewhere but then they don't really go anywhere and now we're back in point one and that Finn and really Rose mean anything were negligible in. yeah that just that, that pisses <laughs> yeah. me off that they were just their but story they still gave a kick-ass performance even though they were completely negligible i understand it was like important to build finn's character arc and he had to have some character development it makes yeah. sense i understand from a storytelling perspective that needed to happen for finn yeah but yeah. To the greater plot, they did. Not, they made it worse. All they did was make things worse. And and like one of the things that I was saying last night um, was, you know, they could have easily fixed Finn and Rose's storyline. Nope. If, I disagree. Instead, disagree. No, I I still I still maintain because Antler Antlers hasn't heard it. Um, that if they could have had a simple fix instead of going to Cantabite to find some master code breaker because Maz initially said she could do it but she was unavailable so that what they could have done is just cut the call with her and gone to save her go yeah, save I Maz think that, bring her more into the movie develop she her said character she's more. unavailable exactly yeah. but, like I said, deal with. but like I said if if you know a rogue blaster bolt goes and knocks out their communications they could have just easily fixed the situation by going Maz Maz we need to go after her. We need to find. I her. feel. I feel like the whole thing with Mars was so shoehorned in. Like that whole kind of scene is. Well, yeah, the way yeah. that it is now. But if if they would have instead gone after Mars to get her to break the code, it would have been a lot more of an interesting story plot than going yeah. to yeah the yeah. casino. Like, well, not to mention that it's okay. pointless. Just to be clear, the code breaker was the dude that they totally missed that was basically Space James Bond, right? Yes. Like he was well, supposed yeah. to be the thinking that the person supposed... that they were sent that the person Moz was talking about was DJ. No. But people are thinking, well maybe he lost the pin, you know, gambling or whatever. Yeah. Doubtful. 
Oh, I mean, possible. It's an interesting theory, but I do think it was the dude at the table. Yeah, yeah. Maz wouldn't have trusted the guy who sold them out to the Empire. I mean, when That's she first true. met Ray, she was super interesting in general. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't think she survived that long with, you know, just trusting. And uh, the thing is, yeah. the guy at the table seemed like a dick as well. It's just like, yeah. why is space full of dicks? Yeah. I mean, everyone... Space just, Vegas, man. Space Vegas. Space it Vegas is, sucks. It is Space yes. Vegas. Space Vegas. It is but, essentially um, Space Vegas. Yeah. I mean, I like the movie though. Like, I would give them. I gave when I came out. I gave it seven point five. I um, think that's fair. I think that's I, fair. The thing is that when I when I kind of like watched videos on it, like um, Grace's review, um, she kind of pointed out the stuff that was you know the highlights of the film, and then you forget about all the slow pacing. So I gave then I bumped it up to an eight. Yeah. I when I came out, I preferred the first one um, much. I, I preferred the first one much more. Yeah, like I was. I can't remember the name of it. What was it? Force Awakens. Force Force Awakens. Awakens, That's it. Uh, Force Awakens a lot more, but then after you know, after seeing it, it's like uh, maybe this the this sequel was better. The thing is with Star Wars films, you can't separate the characters. Like the main characters, you don't give them threading plots. You need to keep them all together because that I think that's what made the original Star Wars so good is because you saw this little team. Yeah, Even when yeah. they split Whereas, him up in Empire, it was just Luke doing his own thing while everyone else was, it was, still, together. was still together. Yeah. You didn't have exactly. Luke doing his own thing, Han's doing his own thing, Leia's doing her own thing. Yeah. yeah. And I what, did. what Leia was doing was pointless compared to what everyone else was exactly. doing. And, was, and what also, Leia's did, did didn't matter at all. No. Exactly. exactly. I do think... So, like, so, so, again, I feel like if... And even if they would have included, you know, Poe in the, the mission, like, if they would have gotten Maz instead of going to the casino planet to get the code breaker, that would have fleshed that out a whole lot better. And the pacing would have been slightly I s- better, maybe? I still feel like it's the same ridiculous oh, premise, is that they somehow left this ship, that, which is the only ship in the area, and no, it's like fleeing ships. from... There were three ships when they left. They still left on a shuttle that was being chased by, like a fleet of 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 cruisers well, yeah but if the shuttle goes like like you gotta remember the cruisers were at their pretty max range firing yeah. on the head ship if the shuttle went out the front they're not gonna like see it or be able to do anything about it yeah like, it's scramble fighters fighters would have to go so far to get to that shuttle. i just still think it's a ridiculous premise that they're yeah. just like oh of course we'll just leave this ship that's being chased by the first order it wasn't really being breaker. chased, though, was it? It was a total. It was a standoff. Like it was being chased very slow. Yeah. Right. So, but I mean, you, you can't tell me vessel, that. You... But here's the thing: they weren't tracking tiny vessels. They were only tra- tracking the big ship. And exactly. they made that point at several points in the film. They were I'm like, still saying it's a... the big ship. I'm still saying it's a ridiculous premise to yeah. be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna go off to a completely different planet well, and yeah, get the person also... who's going to help us. It's also the same reason, like, they didn't notice the, all the escape shots. Yeah, exactly. Last month. They were yeah. cloaked. They were stealth. Yeah, but they yeah. weren't even cloaked. The, the Admiral... They were cloaked to radar. They were yeah, cloaked they... to radar. Yeah, and it's just like, you're not what was see... that? And then she's you're like, oh, it's just it. debris. It's oh, it's fine. It's it's just space debris. It's definitely they nothing. They blown up three ships. She watched like, it. There, there was a lot of debris. By that point, they hadn't blown up any I, ships. I don't have a problem with that part. Yeah, I didn't have a problem either. No, I, I I just still maintain that if they would have gotten Maz instead of going to the casino planet to get the other code breaker, it would have been better. It would be nice for them to flash out Maz's character a bit more. But yeah, I I I don't but know. Again, I no, think they want to keep just, her enigmatic and a mystery like Snoke. They'll just kill her <laughs> off halfway through the next movie, and we'll get yeah, no answer. exactly. Yeah. Why was that? Why did they do that? <laughs> it's like, almost oh, as if yes. the guy who wrote it was like. Oh, okay. So we're gonna have well, this. Well, okay. Big... Here's the thing, though. I would feel they the new. They Darth here's mauled the... him. That's what they did. They Darth mauled well, him. No, they there's... presented an interesting yeah, here's... character, here's... gave you nothing about I it. I saw and a he post died. on Facebook today. I saw a post on Facebook today that had like characters side by side: mm-hmm. the Emperor and Snow, Luke and Ray, and someone else and someone else. I forget who. But anyways, like the point that they were making about Snoke and the Emperor is that in the original trilogy, we didn't have any backstory 
to Emperor Palpatine. We were just no, like, okay, he's the no, evil emperor. It, he's still, right. It's and he was still a major story. character. Like, he was still like, an it, important plot point. To, like, even though you didn't know, like, what his actual, like, who was he before he was the emperor? He was still, like, the emperor, and he was, like, this evil force, and you saw him, and he was mysterious. Palpatine. And with, and you with don't... Snoke, it's just like, all right, so he's this incredibly powerful Sith Ward who just, like, didn't see it coming when he got cut in half with a lightsaber? Like, like I get it, okay? I get that I get that Kylo Ren was purposely trying to make it so that he was thinking about killing Snoke, but, he like, visually, he tried to make it look like he was going to kill Rey. But still, even that, it's just like, how did you not see... You, um, you like, force lightninged him across the room earlier, and you're just like, ah, oh, yes. My problem with Snoke was the fact that, okay, imagine this, like, at the end of the Avengers, the original Avengers, we got that very quick clip of Thanos, um, Thanos, however you wish to pronounce it. Imagine then if the next uh, Avengers-related film or any of the, you know, any of the superhero films, they then killed Thanos off. Yeah. That's what it seemed like. You, right. you no. make Snoke this massive entity, this, you know, overruling thing in the, in the first film, and then in the second film... He dies like really easily as well. By yeah, the way, like really and it's like, and then, why and then would there's... you do that? It doesn't matter about his past. It's the fact that it almost seemed like, oh, this would you know would be a really good idea for the first film: giant, mm -mm, deformed-faced man. And then you get to the second film, you're like, eh. why? Why and would then you do that? There's that one well, shot reason, that's just like him reason... in half on the ground with like one eye like lazily <laughs> drifting and like his tongue. Yeah, and like... then it pans out and his legs fall off. Well, the reason that they wanted to do it and the reason that I get it is because like they want to be unpredictable going into the last one of being like Kylo Ren is the big bad. What does that mean? Like, it, I, I mean, on the surface, it doesn't make sense. But I, when you really look at it, it's like... It's so okay, dumb. but it's, it's like a wild card. Dumb. It is a wild it's card. It's a waste it's like... of a character, and I think that might be what they're doing with Mars as well. I think, you know, we've introduced her in the first one. Here's a I brief mean, they... second of her in the second one. You want to talk about a waste of character, Captain Phasma. Totally the Boba Fett of this I show. Called that. I called that from the moment I saw her in the previews for Force Awakens. I'm like, oh, she's Boba Fett. Fiery I think she's going... The, the thing is, I think she has potential to become... I don't know... <sighs> It's weird because she was more prominent in the first one. Only got a yeah, scene in the second one. Light real marks. question. Real question. Will she? Is she dead? Do you yes. think she's dead? I think she Clearly died she's in dead. the fiery explosion that she fell into. That they cut hey. away nine different angles of. Mm. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I, I won't be surprised killed. either way. Yeah. Like. Yeah. If she appears, it'll be like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. If she doesn't appear, okay. I saw no Sarlacc. Like, are I you die. really? I'll die. Are you really gonna go into the last film where the only threat is Kylo Ren? Like, there's and no one else. Hux, and, and General Hux, Hux is a wimp. You're, you're holding I on, Joe. You need Hux to just joke. let go. I love Hux. <laughs> still but... don't hold for General Hux. <laughs> still, still, still hold for General Hux. And that was the other thing. Like... That was the other thing we talked about the other day when when we saw the movie. I was just like, the entire thing, parts of it at least feel like a parody of star wars and not actual star wars the, this film they injected and i think it is because disney has made the first film and they've you know they're comfortable with it and they do this to like every single live action film now and not just live action just any film but they inject comedy into it and suddenly it's like we've it kind of reminds me like Guardians of the galaxy the sequel to the Guardians of the galaxy 2 mm -hmm. was very they put so much comedy into it that the film all the seriousness of the film kind of was like an afterthought that's right. also very guardians of the galaxy i don't know because guardians of the galaxy one although it had it fun, it's funny moments i think they put they pumped too much into number two and i think that's what they've done here with star wars like with this one was super funny and i'm not saying yeah. you know it, it, especially for such a long film as it dragged out the comedy helped but i think they put too much comedy into it it's like you compare older star wars films that wasn't you know as there wasn't fun. any it wasn't yeah. Yeah. yeah but this it just seems so blatant i and i think that's what made it kind of seem like a parody what well, was because of the amount of general comedy they put into it and it was like that first scene like sets up because i think you're right it was there like throughout the whole film was just like these moments of comedy that kind of felt like they were undercutting 
the the more dramatic the moments. Tension and, and I will say, and I, I think say, that it worked for Luke. Yeah, for, for Luke, it was it was actually Luke, pretty I hilarious. Um, I think that worked with Luke, though. So. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Because yeah. like, you got to remember who trained Luke mostly. Yoda. And yeah. Yoda was a crazy Re bastard in the swamp by the time Luke met him. <laughs> Reach and out. And as Noah is also trying to point out, the Pogs. I mean, they were just Disney trope all over, really, weren't yes. they? I, I'm going to be real. <laughs> They're fucking adorable. The Borgs. I didn't love the Borgs. <gasps> I didn't hate the Borgs. Why is it just working now? I am. I'm very indifferent Wait. to the Borgs. S say it again. Say it I'm again. Very indifferent to the Borgs. Still, I, my favorite scene. I'm coming. Was, I see was the about to We're gonna fight the in the Borg, streets. And the four Borgs show up. I'm just like, Chewie's eating like a king tonight. I didn't even realize that that was a pork that he was eating originally. I thought no. they were just really hungry. Here's the no, thing. No, that was a pork. Like, that was a roasted pork. Two Chewy porgs. wasted a perfectly good roasted pork. Two. Two Because there was one on the fire. Like, I get Ooh. that they're cute and whatever, but you already cooked those two. You might as well just eat them in, in peace and then, like, not kill anymore if you he, feel that bad. But they made him the rest eat them too. Kill the he rest and eat them a, too. A guilty eat like a king. Eat like a king, whatever. Chewy. But... You deserve it. The point is Your best that, friend just died. that that first scene is what sets up like that dr dr drama comedy thing that's going on for the whole thing. Because it's like this epic opening scene where it's like they're escaping from the last order and everything's super serious. And General Hux gives this incredibly serious speech. And they're just like still holding for General I'm Hux. Still, still holding for General Hux. He's like, I believe he's tooling you, small, <laughs> small pasty guy. Yeah, it... Mm. Porn I can hear you it got a little, it got a little space poorly, slightly. Oh, mother. Yeah. yeah, that scene was a bit much. I love yeah. it, but it was a bit much. Yeah. Um, but, although, at the same time, that's a very, like, that just fits Poe Dameron's character from what we've seen. That was a very Poe plan. One, yeah, I don't think that yeah. scene would have worked with any other characters except for Poe and Hux, because Hux is such Ex a... Oh, he's serious, such a, like, straight-laced... Yeah. yeah. That moment though, when they're in the room, first of all, I love the jump to light speed. That scene was yes. amazing. It when, looked exactly like yeah. Doctor Who. <sighs> it was so <sighs> beautiful. And then like just oh, the sweet. absolute silence they had at that moment, like cutting out all <gasps> other sound. And it was just like Oh when yeah. when she goes through the ship. Yes. Yeah. That jump yeah. to light speed. The spear was to light amazing. Speed. And you just that see, was like, so anime. You just see that's the, the, the ship like I fracturing. Said. It was seriously was. Well, especially like, because oh, at the same time they're later. having the fight over the lightsaber. And it's just like all all light and gusts and smoke, and it's just like the lightsaber breaks. Light speed happens, and it's just like everything's just like frozen in this moment of time where the ship is just like it's fractured out across the universe. Beautiful, such oh. a beautiful scene. Amazing. Yes. I quite so liked the, the 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 um I can't remember her name the pink haired lady the vice admiral general yeah. vice admiral Holdo yeah. yeah Holdo that was it yeah I that really was like thing. it was a shame like she didn't have m more of a yeah a real story or that's impact what, because that's what happens when you split it into like four stories going on all of yeah one. I mean mm -hmm. the thing is though what, she wasn't I don't think did she have any like of a kind of story background comic book or otherwise yeah. she did she was in um, Leia Princess of All on the book yeah she okay. actually grew up oh, with yeah. Leia she was like a childhood friend yeah but like um, she, that was she was such a good character like they should was. have had her in original because just how oh, I don't know. I mean, I hated yeah. her at the start, but when she did that, I was just like, yes! Yeah. Feminism! Because, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, she just had, like, a really that... awesome gravitas to her character. It was just, like, really yeah. Oh, yeah. Another talking point that uh, Archmage pointed out in the chat. Uh, Leia's force scene. Uh... Oh. You mean the really badass moment where she just, like, is like, screw the vacuum of space, I'm surviving <laughs> this. Yeah. To be honest, when that happened, I kind of thought, is that like, was that after? Oh, okay. No, 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 there's okay. no way they would do that. No, okay, here's the story. Officially, they said nothing was changed about Carrie Fisher's character in The Last Jedi after her death. Nothing was changed. So this is how her character was supposed to play out in this film anyway. Didn't it seem like it, though? Didn't it seem like it Carrie Fisher had literally 
like they took her... a still image of her and then just did it across. No, I you don't know, think that. Like, it just I didn't feel. I definitely thought it didn't feel like, very force like. I mean, I definitely thought that. A lot of people are that saying that, that like... it feels Mary Poppinsy, but yeah. Um, it and just I think didn't the only feel reason the people are doing that, I think the only people are making that connection is because, like Jenkin pointed out last night, because is because Disney right. owns, you know, both like if Disney of those didn't things, own Star and they Wars, just yeah. made if the that's... joke in Guardians of the Galaxy. If they yeah, had um... done that scene and and LucasArts wasn't owned by Disney, then nobody would say it was like, oh, it's just Disney doing Mary Poppins. They might still not like it, yeah. but they wouldn't just say that it was a Mary Poppins. Because when I saw that have... scene. When, when I was in the theaters and I saw that scene of uh, Leia getting sucked out in the vacuum of space, I'm like, oh my god, did they yeah. just kill her? They, they weren't supposed to. to. Yeah, totally. Because she's supposed, she's supposed to make it to nine. So did they just lie to us? And then they cut back and then it's like, why? Why Are you just digging the knife in because she's dead? Are you doing that? And then she finally uses her force powers and saves herself you know, to fight another day. And I'm just sitting there in the theater and I'm like, yes, fucking yes. It's just the way that they did that scene just didn't feel very, it just didn't feel very momentous in terms of, I don't know. It's like the, we, we've we never known that Princess Leia actually could, you know, it never been yeah. confirmed until that point. But no, it wasn't. It, it, it was though. Because in it? Return of the Jedi, Luke's like, the force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. But yeah, you never but saw to her see use it, it which yeah. is the point. One, you never saw her you, use it. Line. Except for her like tele telepathic connection with like everyone in her family. Yeah, but yeah that, except that they're in the same they have family. The force. It's obvious that everyone in her family has the force though. Yeah. And yeah. that scene just didn't feel like I don't know. It like an empire like when they're I, driving away and Luke's in danger and she's like we have to go back for Luke. Yeah, they're twins. Yeah, no, that, could was, be a that, that could system. literally be a twin that's, thing. <laughs> that's not I, a twin thing, though. It's literally, that is her force power. No, no. Hold on. Not to, not to totally get off subject here, but I do want to point out that there are totally fraternal twins who, are, who will argue with you that that is totally just a twin thing. Like, real-life people very... who will argue that that's a twin thing. But Yes, but then when they the carried it over into these new films, when Han died and she's just like, oh... And then you know has her moment like she has tell you know she uses the I force. That's that's the other thing yeah. Yeah. with so, her family when she felt Kylo like yeah. when she when that that whole thing. Yes, yeah. I can agree yeah. with you there. Han's but death, Kylo, Luke, Luke again. Oh, I, hold on, Han's I, death. Maybe. I also. I also had to laugh at how often they just did close-up shots of people's faces as they were like feeling each other can through I, the force, just like. Can I make a comment <laughs> about oh, the lay using a force scene? The force scene now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I can I finally make my comment? Yes. I think part of the biggest downside of that scene and why it maybe didn't feel as impactful was the music. Like Princess Leia's theme is fantastic. Don't get me wrong; it's not the most impactful piece. It's a very like. It's just kind of like True. dainty. Like, I yeah. feel like if they would have yeah. swelled it more it, like, when it goes yeah. up, when it crescendos up, if they would have like done like another crescendo. Well, they did. They swelled into uh, May the Fourth, and I feel like they should have just had it be more. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, like, yeah. It, yeah. The scene would have definitely worked with more impactful music, but I don't know. The scene she it just felt very. I don't know. It's Maybe it's just, me. It just felt wooden. It just felt very, very not a th there was no there was no real effect you know you yeah. can it just seemed very i think that's just the very downside well of being in space yeah. yeah maybe maybe that's it maybe, maybe there should have the thinking maybe there should have been more debris moving out of her way as she yeah was. kind yeah. of make it a little more dramatic it wasn't yeah. dramatic we'll, enough we'll that put it in the amazing. george lucas special edition i still <laughs> i still really like <laughs> that scene because i still felt like there was there was a moment of it i, I felt like it was still very leia because it was, she's such yeah. a fighter. Yeah, that just of very course, graceful. Even yeah. even yeah. in this moment where she was like, like the bridge is destroyed, dead. everyone's dead, and she's sucked into the vacuum of space. She's just still in this but she's moment a bit of like, like no, no, I've got shit to do. Yeah, not gonna yeah. die. Yeah, she, I get that. I'm not done and That yet. was great. Yeah, it was that's, very low, but I just think the that's why I love that scene is because she wasn't done yet. Yeah, I I had the same reaction Noah had the first time I saw it in the theater. I was just like, ah. Oh! I cried. Yeah. I'll say it. Tear, tears for shed. Tears for shed. I started I crying during that. the opening scroll. That's when I started crying the first time I watched Last Jedi. I was that like, was oh my god, that's the escape. Oh no. 
I didn't realize they said Carrie Fisher was going to be in, like she was going to survive until the next one. So yeah, I didn't hear that either. It was, yeah, it was. Well, I'm always happy, but then I was well, like, Joe, oh, you didn't be in a want... Carrie. Ma- oh, Joe, you didn't want any spoilers. You, yeah, you, you I went into this as much as I could. Yeah. 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 So me, who watched all the trailers and read <laughs> you, like, who is like all the news every... articles. Yeah. Every mm-hmm. week, you yeah. you tried to bring the next new one second clip to the podcast. You're just like. Yep. Dudes, there's no. a new trailer. It shows five more Guys. seconds that we didn't see before. Guys, we got to see two more seconds of porn footage. <laughs> Wait. By the way, Wait. I also had to laugh that all of that porn footage that everyone's just like, oh my god, it's great, literally jammed into like a five minute chase scene in the movie. <laughs> like, all of it just happens in one short little burst. If you add something to a movie that's cute and gonna sell merchandise, it doesn't matter how long it's. It does. Yeah. That's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. And I, as we can see, it has done its job. You have merchandise. I, I do have to agree with what Noah said about the amount of porgs in the film. It was the perfect amount of porgs. Yeah. There yeah. should not have been more. And there. You know what, what I that? think? There could have the been shame. less, but. There could have been less, but I think it was but fine. I'm not. Yeah. I'm you know not, what I think is the, the shame? Um, the trouble with trebles. What was that? Was that a Star Trek episode? Yes, yes. That was Star I think Trek. they could do the yeah. same thing with Porgs. Like, there's going to be before the next Disney movie. There's going to be like a short five minute movie no. with Chewbacca no. running no. around the ship chasing no. Porgs. No, no. Yeah. but they it's already gonna, released no a children's book. Ever again. No, no they released. Ever they again. they did release a children's book called Chewie and the Porgs. I only know that because I work at a library. Oh, but there um, we go. They'll, they'll, the mini movie's that's coming. That's Porgs fine. That's fine. Sell. A 22-minute short before the next Star Wars movie of Chewie <laughs> chasing porgs. porgs around the yeah. ball. The and then just a 22-foot porg just appearing in the next movie for no apparent I have a four-foot porg in the <gasps> other room. See? It's happening. The Volt There's going to be more porgs. Though, those were awesome. The, the, no, the, the crystal the, foxes. The, yeah, the crystal foxes. Volkers. Yeah. Because I felt like they were graceful, (laughs) they were cute, and they actually served a real purpose because they helped them escape from the base. It's true. They could have used those a bit more, I think. I mean, I don't think they were... I think there could have been more of those icy Vulpixes. I think so, too. I like those. Well, well, we'll just remember all the time they spent on that planet, though. They were there for, like, an hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. time. Five minutes of film. Also, what was... um, Did I miss something? You know, with a lady was in the casino the weird uh, opera singing shouty screamy lady yes. for that very quick second is she a cameo of a character from like, i don't the think story? so i think that was literally just a woman no. screaming as the her I, stampede i want to i want to say that it was a dig at fifth element and their alien opera singer Ooh, maybe that would be hilarious yeah. but that's just me because i fucking hate that film i mean the code breaker was definitely a joke on james bond 100 percent why? Yeah. I love the fifth element. What's wrong you with the fifth element? You and me are going to have words after this. Wait, wait, wait. Why do Come you hate me. the fifth element? Yeah, exactly. It's... Give me. One sentence. You have one sentence to say why you hate the fifth element. It's uninteresting. Don't. Nope. Wrong answer. Excuse wrong me. Answer. Do you not remember the right radio answer. announcer the character from that? There's, there's one I, right I answer. I love Last oh, Jedi Jamie. more than I love more there's, than I like. There's... You know, fifth element. There's one the element of Phantom Menace. I like Phantom Menace more than I like uh, Fifth Element. Wow. Get out. That Get out of this podcast. That is no. strong. No, I t- okay. No, I've tried. I've tried to like it. My father watches it all the time that it's on television. You don't need and I just to try to like it. Gary Big Oldman is the boom. only reason to not like that movie. The, the ridiculous Gary the Oldman only costume. Character, the only character Chris I like Tucker. in that film is Chris Tucker. That is the Ruby only Rod. thing I like about that movie. Yes, the, he is the, a more amazing character, but... No, he's the is... only reason you're allowed to Ruby not Ruby Rod, like... the prototype of every YouTuber and streamer that now exists. Ruby Rod. <laughs> it's yeah. true, though. Pretty much. <laughs> it's true. It is true, yes. Look, I'm like, you, you think I'm kidding? But I have seen RIL <laughs> Twitch streamers <laughs> who wear crazy things and walk around and make crazy commentary on their life. Oh Ruby Rod. God. Yes. Yes. That's so true. Sorry. I was, that was just, oh, but that no, was just I, perfect. Like, Fifth Element is an okay movie, but like, I, I just don't love it. I don't love it. And, no, and I, no, I should no, say hate you as didn't a strong say, phrase. You didn't say I don't love it. You said I hate it. 
You said you hated it. And I should you... say I should say hate is a strong phrase. I just I don't love it. There are there are redeeming moments, but I feel like out of I feel 10. like anything to do with the cruise ship out of ten is out of is, ten. Out of ten. Six and a half pushing six point nine. <laughs> six and a half that's pushing above six. average. That's, that was, that's, no, that's, you're that's too a good nice score. The movies you hate. Yeah. 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 I think he's saying that to appease us. So, yeah. but then you're saying Phantom Menace is like a seven or an eight. That's, I mean, that's a pretty strong <laughs> review of Phantom yeah. Menace. Mm. He's he's totally appeasing us with that six point yeah. five. <laughs> totally appeasing with the six. How do you yeah. feel about Dark Let's Crystal? Move on. Let's Dark Crystal, on. Dark Crystal. I, I, Dark Crystal's all right. It's not my favorite, but it's uh, it's all right. All right, let's continue. It um, Dark Crystal definitely drags, but yes. Let's Speaking yeah. Let's which, move back on. Last so, Jedi Lady drags. Yeah, dragged. Yeah. I definitely thought the movie was going to end yeah. like thirty minutes before it actually ended. Yeah, and then you remember. Can we just say? Yeah. Can we just say that last off. that last hour was incredible. Like I lived for that last day. Was that but... after the ship was finally blown up? Yes. Oh yes. yeah. Like that yeah. was when less it... than an hour. I think mm, forty-five minutes. I'd, yeah, say. I'd say. I feel like twenty-five minutes, thirty yeah. minutes, maybe. Uh, it's like... not an hour. But no, the, yeah, the pacing of it was minutes. slow. I that's... said I thought it was going to end like thirty minutes middle. before it ended. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Noah said an hour. Oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. No, I'm I'm saying I like the the last hour, like mostly focusing on like. The sh How... ship and everyone's friends. Like, yeah, like when from they killed like... everyone we cared about. Eh. Guys, real question: Did Greg Grunberg live? Who? Wait, who was Greg Grunberg in that? He was in The Force Awakens. He was an X-wing pilot. Oh, oh okay. I don't, I don't remember his name. I don't he remember. He was an X-wing pilot because he's just like J.J. Abrams' best friend. Is everything? Also, also, quick question: Was yeah. there a cameo of Keenan from Keenan and Cal? No, I don't think so. I'm almost not that I am. There was so. a cameo from Gary Fisher, Carrie's dog. He... Yes, he was being held by one of the people in the casino, wasn't he? Yes, was he, he casino? was. Yeah, and and then apparently, um, oh, who is it? Who is it? Was playing one of the. Um... Wow, I'm so full of information, aren't I? Yeah. Um, what was his name? Benicio you know del Toro. No, no. Fuck Benicio del Toro. And... American actor, British actor. Uh, you know what? I'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah. I can. Uh, the, I'll apparently, it. though, Break apparently, though, since we're talking about British, uh, they cut uh, Prince William and Prince, Prince Harry's cameo. Yeah, Prince Harry and Prince William. Were they they had a cameo Trooper in the film. Storm. He was a stormtrooper. It was. <gasps> oh, why didn't they do it? Oh, God, what's his name? The. <laughs> Somebody help me, please. I'm very. Is bad it not Daniel Craig? Not Daniel Craig. Because he, he was in Force Awakens. I can't believe I just said Craig in a really American way. Uh, Craig. No, no, no. Craig. 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 Um, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. Craig. We're turning him. <laughs> He's ours now. Uh, <laughs> I want an AC and, and a waste thing. disposable. Waste disposer. That You guys all have those, right? The same what? thing where you put the trash yeah. down. Garbage yeah, disposal? Call, yeah, we call it a garbage disposal. But oh, are you talking about Gwendolyn Christie? Christie? No, as, no, as, no! It was oh. Tom, 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 Tom Hanks? Hardy, Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Oh yeah, Tom Hardy. Tom was a <laughs> you know, you know, famous British actor Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. <laughs> Tom Hanks. That's well, the you guy. said you said Tom. Tom. I got. I was just going through all the Toms that I could, but no, Tom Hardy. Everything he says is a stitch. <laughs> yeah, Tom Hardy. <sighs> anyway, Tom Hardy had a cameo. I don't know if it made it or not, but um, it was nice to see Carrie Fisher's daughter in it. Yes. That made yeah, me sad. Every time she came on really screen, I was just like, "Yeah, she did. Just, she did, did good." I actually really her. hope that she has like a part to play in the next a bigger movie too. Role, yeah, yeah, because yeah. she was in the first well, one I mean, and she was just kind of like a background resistance. Now that ninety percent of the rebels are dead, now, yeah, I feel uh, like it should build a little did more. Did anyone actually like, like? Did anyone like Rose? I didn't like her. I liked I Rose. I kind of liked Rose. I I don't know. She's sweet. Like, I don't know. I just didn't. Get it, and that whole her liking, uh, loving I don't know. Finn. Yeah, here's the thing. Everyone likes Finn. So here's, you wait, hold on, like hold on. Why? I want to add something to that. The end of that movie, they're just like, oh, just for the record, 
we just want to reestablish that who Finish knows straight. who's into who, right? Because it's like the whole movie. It's like yeah. you have this connection between Ray and Kylo, and then you have this thing between like Finn and Rose, and then at the end, it's just like, well, Ray's really happy to see Finn, and then Finn is taking care of Rose, and now Poe and Ray are meeting. So who knows who's into who, right? It's still all open <laughs> yeah. for the last Can, movie. What guys. happened to the whole? Give the Jedi, the, the pilot, pilot, and the hot one. <laughs> The whole Poe and Finn thing. Because, like, in the first movie, people thought, oh, that's a Finn. But then it was kind of completely... So here's the thing. I always just point. thought they were, like... I always just thought Poe po was really a people person. And he'll yeah, call it's this called Poe. You can but... call it Poe. 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 No. Po the po the only there. reason that people ship, like, Poe and Finn is because of the whole moment when it's like... Oh, hey, buddy! Jacket? Is that my jacket? No, keep it. Looks good. Yeah, it's, it's just like a lower lip good, bite, and it's like, looks good. Looks good. Looks good. <laughs> now try and do that to any of your male friends and tell me if that's not but gay. Joe, your hair looks good. <laughs> it was I more of an intense lip bite, and now Joe feels very uncomfortable. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Like, mm -hmm, mm. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, stupid kill! Just give up! Give up! Stop. Stop. Hey, Janky. What? I love that hat on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what has that. this become? What has this so become? Definitely moving on. Character yeah, definitely moving on. <laughs> yeah, so who's going to end up with who? Foe. Does it oh, matter? I'm pushing oh, foe. It doesn't I'm, matter. I'm pushing for... Ray Either way, somebody's going to be related. Poe's probably the related to Ray. They're going to get it. Yeah. You know, just like the original. Oh my stuff. god, that would be a twist. Oh, that reminds me. That brings me back around to another point, which is people are talking about, like, isn't it Ray's a parents? shame that that Ray's parents turned out to be nothing? That has to be a lie, right? I'm just like, uh, no. why does it have to be a lie? That actually makes perfect okay. sense. To all, and, and this is this is what I was talking about last night. Like, everyone that's like, well, it doesn't make sense. She has to be connected to a Skywalker, because why else would she have the Force? I point mm. to literally every other Jedi in literally existence. Literally any other Jedi in existence. As I say, it's not Yoda Skywalker. Yeah. I don't it's think not, Yoda is part of Skywalker. It's not Yoda Skywalker. Family. It's not Obi-Wan Skywalker. It's not Qui-Gon Skywalker. It's not Mace Skywalker. Well, yeah, I was going to say, it's not Mace Windu. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure Mace Windu is a Skywalker. It's I, like, I, who, and it's like, who was Anakin? Anakin was a slave boy on Tatooine, which is literally nowhere next to <laughs> Well, and literally, Where are you from? Luke's, from like, Luke's from first nowhere. lesson to Rey. Check. Luke's first lesson Pretty to Rey no is that the Force belongs to no one. And to say yeah, that exactly. if the Jedi die, the light die is ridiculous it's and vanity, prideful. Yeah. yeah. I love the way that Kylo delivered that line to her, though. It was just so, you know what? You know, <laughs> you're so, not a part yes, of this you know, story. It, it just doesn't, his face here's, just doesn't move. Like, yeah. you know, here's, here's what's great. Can you put was, on a cowl or something? You, you, can, you can literally <laughs> pinpoint the moment that she decided to be against Kylo Ren. It is the moment he says, you are nothing. With You're not a part of the story. With the yeah. most indifferent not... face on the... <laughs> yeah, it was so like... indifferent. It's unbelievable how indifferent it was. Like, when he You're delivers that, I'm just like, I'd be out. <laughs> but when she, yeah. when he said that, do you ever, did you feel that Ray kind of then f background a bit as a character for the rest of the film? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That she felt she to kind the of... background? Yeah, like... Not as like not as in like a personal viewing aspect. In the actual film, she became no, no. almost like yeah, a secondary character. Yeah, no, because you don't see her again until they come in with the Millennium Falcon, and then. Oh no, I didn't yes. think that at all. Actually, no. no? I felt I felt no. like she she resurged at the end whenever they all met up again, yeah. and she had that yeah, like, she, she had that box. moment with yeah, Leia, yeah. and I felt like that was like okay, she has become the next Jedi, and I felt that moment happen. But, but yeah, then the whole I, I think you cutting... are right that immediately after the fight over the lightsaber, it did feel like she kind of disappeared for a hot sec until after Which, the battle when it again, felt significant. How did again. she get back to the Millennium Falcon? She was like, was... she had she 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 left in Snoke's escape pod, like they said, and she yeah. said Chewie would meet her whenever she sent him coordinates. So obviously it's... she sent him coordinates from the escape pod and then he picked her up. The okay, thing is, they enough. spent so much time on the ship chase, you know, the whole ship thing. Oh, not really much is happening, we're just all talking. And they could have added scenes like that. What What are you doing? <laughs> this is the ship chase, which is like... This is the ship chase, yeah. Yeah, okay. it's not moving. It's not moving. Uh, <laughs> but they, they spent so much time on that when they could have had the scene 
oh, Chiri meeting up with Ray and everyone meeting. Yeah. Or, yeah. or Ray going after the. Um, I yeah, I like, don't think we need. Fighters. To... They're tie fighters, aren't they? Yeah, I think. Well, well I think yeah. I think uh, Kylo Ren's ship is different. No, it's too fast. What's called? Stop it. Too quick. There too we fast. go. No, they're yeah. moving. They're moving. <laughs> I can see them moving. We did not. We did not need to cut to that scene every then, time we went back to the ship. I know it was. It's just, like it's a, this is what's happening. A new so. angle. <laughs> oh, that's the same thing that was happening before. And it's like, oh nope, that ship's falling back. Okay, they blew that ship up. Cool. It's like me trying to trying to tell Janky about new trailer footage. We got two new seconds. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> nope, not? nope. Actually, the same two seconds from a different angle. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. But it was a good film. Notice, yeah, yeah, like, quick, like we can back. poke fun at it and pick at it, but it was a good film. Go back and, and watch the trailers. Yeah, the ship chase scene was not in a single trailer. I wonder That's why. Say, hmm. <laughs> but that was the highlight of the film. <laughs> I, I mean, if you ask the editor, I think it was. There's no there other a backdrop on the, back the whole film. Time. It was. I hope there's another exciting space fight. Which reminds me, where were the lightsaber battles? There was there one. Great, yeah. It was really good. They, yeah, there, there was, was one, one really, 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 really one. Good, no, sorry, two really, really good ones. I'm sorry, what was ah, the, the second one? The last one was a half. The You're not talking. Kylo Ren. Are you, inclu are you including like Ray and Kylo fighting off the Red Queen oh, of yeah, Hearts? That, that's and the guards. one that I yeah. meant. That was the good one. Yeah, yeah. That's the one that counts. Yeah. Does that... It was framed beautifully. I mean, but yeah. I mean, it wasn't I'm like just, two wait. people with lightsabers against each other, but yeah, it was yeah. two people with lightsabers fending off an entire Fighting army of off. people with laser weapons. <laughs> like, yeah. I would also count uh, Finn and Phasma's fight as like not a lightsaber fight, but it had like the same essence of. Yeah. You see, I felt and, like uh, that I'll didn't take long Luke though because Ren. she just like knocked him down a pit, and then he came up and just like cold cocked her with, yeah, with sure an electric did. baton. Um, That's I think we're more focused on what lightsabers can do as lightsabers rather than you know swords maybe because there was a lot of you know oh i just got the lightsaber Boom. that guy's yeah. got a hold of his head now i love that I you love know there was a lot of that. stuff like that that wasn't you know just <laughs> yeah i think that's what they were trying to focus on more but it is star wars and i love those lightsaber battles in this star wars film and i love the chase sequences in this film and it just it, it didn't really do yeah that. we did talk a bit the other day about um what they've been doing with light speed too because yeah. you know the light speed jump sequence where she like crashed into the ship but also there was the one where like han i don't remember was he launching out of a ship at light speed or was he, he going launched into a out ship? of a ship well he did both he launched yeah. out of the ship at light speed but then he also when approaching star killer base had to drop out of light speed in atmosphere to get through the shields right yeah or to get in undetected or whatever. And then in Rogue One, Darth Vader's coming out of hyperspace and crashes into half of the escaping rebel fleet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah, about that. So, I mean, they're doing yeah. like interesting things with established stuff in the Star Wars universe, which is cool. But yeah. Um, Except for the chase sequences. Except for the chase, Except sequences. For the chase sequences. You don't need to change those. Those, those are perfect the way they are. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everything George Lucas about the confrontation the between scenes. Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren was delightful. Like, like yeah, that was shoot, the most it's just like, I... do you think you hit him? And he just like walks out of the smoke. I want every gun to fire on that man. I love, I, I gotta say it again. I've said it 20 million times. When Luke Skywalker matrixed under the lightsaber, well, the image of Luke Skywalker, <laughs> and then spun out of it, that was the most satisfying dodge in all of film. Yep. Mm -hmm. True. Just the, we haven't... Mo the motion of it just felt so good. Can we give a special mention to Jedi nuns? The, the, I love yeah. the Jedi yes. nuns. The caretakers, yeah. And how oh, Ray just, just caused them want... no end of consternation. Yeah, I know. Like, that was just amazing. I, I love those, those I love... little tiny alien ladies. I love the first time they appear... Just out of nowhere, like halfway through <laughs> everything that's going on in Octo, suddenly they're there. And Ray's just like, who are they? What, what are they? And I'm just like, Heretakers. thank you for asking we, the question we're we, all thinking. Can we talk about the blue milk scene? 
Yes. No, I don't want to talk about the blue milk scene. Here's the there thing. was a lot of it, boobs in Star it's, Wars, it's and it like didn't belong to a human. It's like showing a cow <laughs> milking on screen. It's a little uncomfortable, but I mean... No, it's showing a persona, like like an anthropomorphic cow getting milked on screen. Yeah, that was... Yeah, I'm sure there was someone was in the world weird, who was probably right? happy. That was with... Yiffy milking. No, yeah, was... but again, I want to talk about my favorite part of the scene, which was after it happened... When Luke Skywalker's got his milk mustache and he's just staring down Ray. <laughs> yeah, and Ray can't look the the animal thing in the eyes. <laughs> just yeah. like he can't. <laughs> Ooh. Well, yeah. The mirror scene. Well, that was a, Yeah, a that wasn't mix. as great as I I don't know. I mean, I guess, I, mean, I, guess the, I saw They were trying trip. to do their their Luke going into the tree and facing Vader thing, but yeah, it was very out. out. But... Here's the point of it. That was her learning that the dark side has promises, but it won't deliver. It's promised. Yeah. It promised her Ooh. answers to things, and she's in there, and she goes there. It's like there was nothing. It, was, it told me nothing. It I gave me no I answers. didn't. Yeah, I didn't get that from that scene, but that's a really interesting look at yeah. it. I, I thought, thought was, I thought about that thought the second obvious. time because you know <laughs> Luke was like super mm -hmm. worried about the fact that she just went to the darkness. But she went yeah. there and then found out that it didn't offer her anything, and so she never wanted yeah. to go back to it. And so I was like, oh, yeah. all right, that's a cool that's a cool concept. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Which actually <laughs> brings me around to another point that I was going to make, which is the Grey Jedi and how people thought that that might happen in this movie. Some people thought yeah. maybe I, they would go for I've the heard Jedi this. Thing. I've heard this in people talking about the film. What's the Grey Jedi? Please enlighten me. So the idea okay, is... Grey Je I'll let Noah say. Speaking as a Grey Jedi... Uh, um, Speaking as an expert. Yes. Um, so basically the idea of the Grey Jedi... Jedi who have broken off from or fallen away from the Jedi Order who are not Sith. They still live and abide by most of the Jedi tenements, but they don't feel like that's the only way to live like they can bend to emotions and things of that nature as long as they're in control they're the middle yeah. ground between yeah Sith yeah right they're the gray area right. yeah got it and as, and when i was walking away i i thought about that and i was like i guess really it doesn't make sense to ever have that in the movie because and this goes back to something that Luke said, which is whenever he had Ray reach out, he said, what do you see? And she's like, life, death and decay, violence. <laughs> yeah, there was also what that part that where she strong? physically it's reached really out. And it what was is hilarious. that? Oh, it's a force. <laughs> but, that was, but you feel that? That's a force. Like, life, death and decay, rebirth, peace, violence, and all these other things. And I was just like, yeah. well, I guess that makes sense. And I guess that's why you can never have a great Jedi. Because it'd be like buying a set of scales and then calling them balanced and never using them for anything. You have to have yeah. two things that you're weighing against each other for there to actually be. Her and Kylo like, Ren are the balance. Yeah. 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 There has to be a like a like powerful light, powerful there darkness. Has to be a, there has to be darkness dark and light in order to have a balance. And even Snook so, said it, like when he was talking about you know Kylo um, being right. the, the powerful darkness rises and light to meet it. Uh, yeah, exactly, and then. There's somebody that's appeared in the light that's just as strong with the light as you are. Right. So, you know, I think it's... Uh, maybe the whole film was just pushing the fact, you know? Like, no, there's no in-between. Yeah. Can't happen. Well, I mean, and the Every thing too, like... And I don't know if you... Do you play Dungeons & Dragons at all? Oh! Okay. Sorry, sorry. Wait, Wait. real quick, real quick, real quick, real yeah. quick. Sorry. I just... They killed Snoke off because they had to maintain the balance. Luke's gonna die. You have to also kill Snoke because they're the. Oh, yeah. It just hit me. That actually makes sense. Okay, that tracks. See, this tracks, tracks back around to Dark maybe, Crystal, where every time a bad guy Kylo died, Ren. a good guy also had to die. <laughs> okay, Kylo but what about what about one. Yuzma? If she's dead, who died in the? Oh, right, the pink-haired lady. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fair enough. Um, and all those other people in the ships, but no one cares. Yeah, and all of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, the they count for the millions of star users. troopers that we're also counting, died. We're counting force users here. I was yeah. just like, a lot of, a lot of stormtroopers died. A lot of nameless characters died. The force keeps balance. It balances out. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do droids count? No. By the yeah, way, so. sorry, before you mentioned the Dungeons and Dragons thing, um, 
BB-8. I don't think I don't think a pe- people appreciate BB-8 in this film. I appreciate this shit. Out of I love great. BB-8. Well, the, I, like everyone that's talked about the film has not mentioned how great BB-8 is. He I has amazed it through the whole he film. Just, he took out like three he just, he, guards on his own, and then like pummeled the last one with a whole bunch of he's coins. He's machine drunk gunning guy, like, coins at them. Here's, here's the a problem tr- about BB-8. Hiding under Every a trash time- can. Every time BB-8 does something really cool, someone does something way cooler right yeah, after. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Like, like when he was the little BB-8, walker. BB-8 has the walker. Faz, Faz, Faz. Someone is like, BB-8 has the walker. Luke Skywalker's a badass. <laughs> there were just like cool moments that happened after every cool BB-8 Poor moment. BB-8. And dark BB-8 as well. Yeah, I hate yeah. dark BB-8. Evil He's dark BB-8. It's, it's funny because Gwendolyn Christie calls him BB-8. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. BB nine E is is BB hate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he sucks. I hate him. All right, one um, second. I'm doing a bit. Uh, keep keep yeah. going. Oh my god. Anyway, what I was Dungeons going to say about Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is if you ever have a character that's like true neutral, like they don't provide balance. They're just the most apathetic people you've ever met in the game. You're just <laughs> boring. Yeah, they they just like they're either agreeable with everyone or they're entirely apathetic to everything that's happening around them, and it's just like, oh, no, he's got his BBA going. Yeah. yeah, is this the bit? Oh, he's Happy not beep. shaking his head right now. I understand. Happy beats. Come on. No, he's not shaking his head. I was gonna ask him if he was he's not in agreement. He's not in agreement. I was going to say, who, who, who's the best badass in the film? And then he was going to shake his head, but he didn't. He so. does the little lighter thumbs up. Yeah. The lighter anyway. thumbs up. <laughs> and yeah, but, neutral, neutral people being neutral in a war, a Star War, is yeah. um, probably not the best thing for anyone. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it makes sense that... I mean, we can't have Jedi people growing up maybe. learning that being Switzerland is okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If there are any Swiss people watching, yeah, we, we don't we don't mean. First anything. of all, kudos to you for watching from Switzerland. Goodness knows how or yeah. why you tuned in, but yeah, sorry, sorry but to no hate offense. on your country. <laughs> but you should. We don't hate on your country. Anything. We just yes. You make Swiss Army knives. Just attack with those. And the chocolate, so good. Anyway. See, powerful pretty, light, pretty powerful light. darkness. Yeah. You make chocolate and knives. Chocolate and knives. And clocks. Clocks are the okay. balance. So, going around, what would everyone rate Star Wars The Last, Je- uh, Last Jedi? I on would give it... On the 10-point scale? Yeah. yeah, on the 10-point scale. Oh, I thought we were giving our own scales, darn. Okay. Our own scales, but you then have to explain what the scale means. Right. I don't think mine needs explained. I give it 10 porgs out of 10 porgs. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, yeah. That's fine. I still give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, if I had to rate it out of 10, though, I would give it a 7.5, like you did. Bordering an 8. Jinky? Mm. Oh, I'll let Joe go first. Oh, darn it. Jason? I was going to give it um, 12 calls on hold out of 12 calls. 14. <laughs> uh, 7.5 seven, seven out of 10. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much in agreement there. I, I, the pacing was just really bad. I can't I think- get over that. I think Janky's about to blow our minds. No, I was just going to say it's like an 85 out of 100. Solid B minus movie. B minus doesn't seem like it should be 85 out of 100. Yeah, it's like a a solid B. No, trust me. I spent time being a student teacher. I know how scores work. That's a solid B. Okay, okay. I need to to figure that out because I'm not American, therefore we don't use that system. What about, what's 50% then? Failure. 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 Anything less than 60 is failure. Oh, well, that explains it. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. It's you so guys yeah, we're not nice. nice. Literally every other country in the world has a humanistic rating <laughs> skill. America, anything less than 60 is failure. Actually, and sometimes even 65, depending on how hard the teacher yeah. is. Sometimes yeah, so you can't be average failure. and successful. Nope. No. No. A- that's, 80? that's our thing in Britain. That's our thing. You have to be as average as fuck. Yes. Um, 80 is average. If you get 80 out of 100, you're an average person. Yeah. That's average. 20% from the top and you're average. Nice, oh, nice B minus yeah. there. Okay. 
don't like it. It makes me sad. That's why we're all fucking depressed. Well, That's why we're all America. fucking depressed. America. Da, 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 America, da, da, da. fuck you. <laughs> all right. Anyways. Is there anything else anyone would like to share? I'll take down um, the spoilers. Oh, we're going spoiler free now? Yes. Yoda was in the film. Talk about Yoda. How awesome yeah, was Yoda? Yoda? Yoda was oh. fucking awesome. Okay, blew that tree up. You mean Luke's new summon ability, Yoda. Luke's new summon ability, Yoda. <laughs> no, Why summon Yoda? And, was, Yoda used and even better, even better, it was Muppet Yoda by Frank Oz. Yes. Oh, I know. But, Puppeteered but the and voiced by Frank Oz. People that have been online complaining about how Yoda too goofy in this i'm like okay first of all you're you're coming from the mentality of yeah, the prequels watch, and rebels and uh um, original yoda anything else yeah yoda, yoda in empire and return of the jedi was a crazy old hermit yoda yeah he he got older. of course he's gonna look like that he's the yeah, he's he old like... yoda, not <laughs> young yoda he was 900 something when he died <laughs> yeah when 900 years old you reach look as good you will not is it just me, or did that film seem a, li a little bit like Pokemon? I mean, you got the Yoda, you, know, you got the Snowball picks, you got the Porgs, there, I mean, you've got the booby true. cows. It's true. There's a lot of little creatures in there. All the yeah, booby cows, know. kind of. Pokemon. Pokemon. But yeah, it was, it was awesome how Yoda just, like, bolted the tree, and then he was just, like, laughing yeah. hysterically, rolling oh. around. Just like, ah. I missed you, I have. Skyrim. One more point. One more point. Yes. Yeah. So, I just don't know if I agree with the timeline of events. It has nothing to do with what Finn and all them are doing. It's with Ray. Ray's How, timeline like, just pass. doesn't line up. Yeah. Yeah, days pass with her on Octo. It's like, it's been 18 hours. Yeah, because the ships are definitely running on an 18 hour schedule because, like, the 18 hours of fuel left. But, well, here's, all I can what, think but they're, in, they're in different parts of the galaxy, so days could be longer for other time. But, like, she spends an amount of time with Luke training. She, you're not yeah, telling me there's... she got all of that training in 18 hours. Maybe it's a, planet that, it's a planet that has, like, an hour day and an hour night, and it keeps going. You know, it could have been the same time. Well, here's what Maybe. I think. So. Because I just feel like she had a lot of growth for a day. Between the yeah. opening scroll and like what's going on with ray i feel like time has passed and i think but she is with... still yeah. in a medical pod and that's my so and you're naked saying bag leaking what wait hold on naked bag leaking. wait why why does why is finn in a medical pod somehow discount everything because he his injuries weren't that severe at the end of Force Awakens. He got knocked out got by a crazy Force person. Yeah, he, and he also got yeah. a lightsaber to the he back. Had like, I, yeah, but like, come he on. He had his back flayed open with a lightsaber and then thrown against a gigantic oak tree. I think if the scene, the starting scene, was Ray and Luke um, doing the whole I'm throwing this behind my back thing, if that, if the whole him, her following him around the island started at the very start, then maybe it would fit together a bit better. It would have felt better. But they needed that opening with the bombs and the crazy to really get you into the film. Yeah. So I think yeah. they made a mistake there with how they've figured it, but I still think the timeline makes sense if that Okay. Occurred. Okay, well, okay, someone was just... Because if you think about it like this, what was happening at the beginning of that film could possibly have been what was happening at the end when Ray had just met Luke. See? So right. it's it does... I think yeah, because but that, that whole part of that whole part of the film takes place over like eighteen hours. Like the ship fleeing is eighteen hours of whatever. So the only thing is there has to be like a small time jump from the end yeah. of well, Force and Awakens. He, but here's to the other thing that. too, and is... all of Ray's stuff happens in that time, and we just I, I get it if it is the different thing. But someone's yeah. trying to tell me, like, someone tried to tell me, like, the whole film takes place in the 18-hour span. I'm like, no, oh, that, that's, so. it, it, Ray got it's there not. in the daytime. It had then been, yeah. And then she slept again a bit later on. So, yeah. like, it went from a day to, day to night thing. Exactly. So, like, yeah. exactly. I don't think it took place in 18 hours at all. Yeah. Well, at least plus there's the argument of like they were flying through space and like who knows what time scale that they were using for 18 hours. Yeah, yeah. but 
I don't think they were they were doing an eighteen hour chase sequence. I, no, I just no. or like a good and amount. Of time. And we also don't know how long they were running in hyperspace from the first out, outset of the movie till. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess we out. actually don't know how hyperspace before they drop. Yeah, the timeline is just a little messed up because we do know Finn woke up in hyperspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finn naked bag leaking what? <laughs> Anyway. And that's how we're going to end it. <laughs> that's yep. how we're going to end it. Finn bag, naked leaking what? Okay. In fact, he just changed hold. that to the name of the stream. Are still there... on hold for Admiral, or General Hux. Yeah, we're Are still they... on hold for General Hux. Still on hold. Is there anything else anyone would like to share before we call the podcast? That's... Um... Star Wars mm... or otherwise. Doctor Who Series 9 soundtrack officially going to be released. Oh, okay, so, so we're done there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's wrap things up. Ants, is there anything going on on your channel that you would like to share? Um, no. Okay. Uh, Subscribe show? to Super Antlers. I mean, yes, do that. Subscribe to Super Antlers. <laughs> Subscribe. Um, or that way. Uh, I'm probably actually going to get back into WoW sometime this next week. I'm going to record another episode, kind of an update, being like, hey, this is why I have an update four months i'm not dead i swear also it's coming back sometimes 7.3.5 drops i'll be back at it going whole yeah. hog enjoying the new level stuff good whole roadhog yep Road no what's up with you i'm still doing star wars content i've got battlefront uh mm. story mode i've got battlefront with you janky i've got swotor with joe yo sorry antlers i don't got anything with you <laughs> but um I uh, that's okay. Yeah, but anyways, um, Tom may or may not be doing Kotor. It's kind of late in the month, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, he is going to do another. Uh, I have issues talking about a Star Wars comic, even though he did one earlier this month for Hydra Nazi Cap. Um, and something for every nerd. Totally, uh, unceremoniously passed its second anniversary. <laughs> just it just happened. <laughs> It just happened, yeah, and I completely yeah, forgot yeah. about it. Yay! Another nominee for the was that it? <laughs> was for the that was that it? it? The something for every nerd second anniversary was that it? Was that it? It just happened. Lackluster yeah. launch, man. Lackluster launch, yeah. Good stuff. Um, trying to think of anything else. I can't think of anything, so I think we're good. All right, cool. Um, as for me, uh. I'll always have Hanging with Janky going up on Sunday. It'll be a Christmas Eve special. I don't even Yay! think it'll be that special. I'll we'll probably just be talking about gaming news like I always do. But I don't know. Uh, Maybe I'll do something special. But, but it Christmas could be a, will be you, you could save Santa. It could be Janky Hanging with Janky saving Santa. That sounds like Somehow. more editing than I want to do. <laughs> Janky saves Christmas. Janky saves I mean, Christmas. Kiss did it, so you should do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. If Kiss and if Kiss can do it, anyone can do it. If Kiss can do it, so can we. Uh, let's see. True. I'll be back on again at ten o'clock tonight to stream. I don't know what. And um, I never love that game. Think... Best game ever. Game of the year, twenty seventeen. Game of the year, twenty seventeen. Yep. Mm -hmm. and... Did we actually? By the way, did we actually say a game of the year? Should we, we did the whole. Do it? Should we quit game of the year? Breath of the like Wild. Our game, That's of the year my game of the year. Breath of the Wild, same. Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Breath of the Wild! <laughs> At in time. Also good game. game of the year. Okay, so, hanging with Janky on Sunday, streaming later tonight. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything. I should have a stream next week, sometime, 26th, day after Christmas. Yay! And, mm -hmm. of course, join us next Thursday for another pop culture podcast at 3.30 p.m. EST. I don't know if we'll have a guest yet. I haven't yeah. found one yet, but we may have a guest. We'll figure we'll it out. Yeah. Worst case scenario, Pop Culture Kitten's back again. Yeah. Yes. Pop Culture Kitten. And that's pretty much all I got. So thank you all so much for joining. If you have to be catching this as a VOD on YouTube, thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely day, evening, or whenever you have to be watching. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next time, this is Joe, Noah, our special guest, Super Antlers, and me, Janky Shenanigans, signing out. A round of applause. And dance. We get dance every one, two. 
We can leave your friends behind. We can leave your friends behind. Put your friends on dance and if they don't dance.